before we start our meeting today, um, I just want to first let the public and the community know um, that Councillor Paulson has missed the last few meetings because he had um, a medical issue um, and a couple of heart surgeries. Um, he is doing very well and he's going to be off council for a little bit longer, but we are expecting him to return in early June. Um, and he wanted to let the community know that um, he's doing well and he really appreciates the support that everyone has given him reaching out. Also, uh, before we start our meeting today, I would like to make the following statement in follow-up to, to the discussion at our last regular meeting of council on April 23rd regarding the city's audit timelines. At that meeting, a report from the Director of Finance was provided, which may have given council and the public the impression that the city's auditors, R. Anderson and Associates, were responsible for the fact that the city's annual audit will not be completed by the legislative deadline of May 15th. I would like to make it very clear that our auditors are in no way responsible or at fault. Council recognizes that the city was unable to have the required financial records completed by that date that had been mutually agreed on by the city and the auditor in order to meet the required deadlines. Comments contained in the report regarding a request for proposal to engage another auditor are not reflective of the work of our current auditing firm, but rather is a standard recommended process for all municipalities to undertake every few years in order to maintain independence. On behalf of Council, I want to express the city's thanks to R. Anderson and Associates for their professionalism and the work they are engaged in on the city's behalf. Okay, we will call to order our regular meeting of Council May, May 13th at 2 p.m. So moved, Madam Mayor. Great. Is there a seconder on, wonderful, on the agenda? Um, and recognize that we are holding our meeting on the unceded territories of the Hoopajesset and Sashot First Nations. Um, on the motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Carried. And we have minutes from the special meeting held at 1.15 p.m. on 1.15 on April, oh, and 2 p.m. on April 23rd, 2019. Somebody like to move adoption? Move to adopt. Is there a seconder? All in favor? Carried. And that brings us to public input period, an opportunity for the public to address council on topics of relevance to city council. Would anyone like to speak? Come on forward, Mr. Mava. John Maba representing uh, Cycle Alberni, and um, I'm here once again to uh, give you the information about bike to work, bike to school, and bike wherever you have to go week, which is coming up the last week in May, and uh, we've got a whole slate of events coming up. Uh, each day we have what we call a celebration station, which is an, op uh, an opportunity for people to come down to this particular location, uh, have a bike to eat, register for some prizes, pick up some paraphernalia for their bikes like little reflectors or lights, um, a whole assortment of um, low, low priced uh, items. Um, and uh, so the first, the first one is Monday morning, uh, the 27th, I believe it is, either 26th or 27th. Um, at one of our newest businesses in town. Uh, it used to be called Aussie Cycle, but now it's called the Jumping Slug Cyclery. And they're going to have a pancake breakfast. So if you can come down with your bike, that's an opportunity to have breakfast with us. Uh, Tuesday morning uh, is a similar event, but this one is up at Steampunk's Cafe. And uh, they'll, be, they'll be having coffee and goodies uh, in the morning from seven to nine and then uh, quite probably again in the afternoon from four to six. Um, Wednesday is uh, at Bilo, and that starts at seven, goes on till nine o'clock, and uh, that's a that's a really exciting. Come on up, Sarah. That's a really <laughs> exciting uh, event, I think, because that's when a lot of the school kids show up, and uh, so it's great to have all the kids come out and uh, register for their prizes and and get goodies. Um, Thursday, it's at the Barclay Hotel from uh, 4 to 6, is it? Yep. Yep. And uh, we like that one because we get really good exposure out on, the, out on Stamp Avenue there. And Friday, uh, uh, Friday morning, we're going to be at ADSS. 
And Saturday is our finale event at uh, Harbor Key. At noon, we're going to have a barbecue. There's going to be a live band. And so we really want everyone to come out and celebrate with us. So what we're inviting you to do is um, your next council meeting is bike to council. And uh, before you do that, we'd invite you to uh, go online to bike to work. Just Google bike to work and register yourself because that allows us to get statistics on your ride. So it means that, that we get credit for your ride. And um, we've, so got, we've got a little... That's uh, why I'm late. We got more hot off the press. Yeah. And it's a steep hill. And I'm like, yeah, it's right here for the fringes. <laughs> but uh, I'm each giving you a couple. Thank so you. you can sign up yourself and then pass it on to someone else and encourage them to ride too. Great. So thank you very much. Thank you. Council, that's uh, Monday, May 27th to bike to council. We'll have to send out an email reminder. <laughs> well, find a bicycle. <laughs> That's right. Would anyone else in the public like to speak? Coming up, Mr. Adams. <laughs> so just a reminder, if you could introduce yourself, uh, state your name and address, and we allow three minutes to speak at public input period. My name is John Adams, and I live at 5205 Batty Road here in Port Alberni in the Beaufort region. And I just like to say that I would appreciate if there would be some discussion with council as I've read about the Terra West report. And uh, my own feeling after reading the report is that uh, I think there should be some action taken as far as closing this place until the city is assured that it is safe for the public to be going there. And I think that, uh, you know, further testing in that may well be a thing not to do until there's grants, et cetera. But I can see no reason whatsoever how the city of Port Alberni can have people going to a place when there's a report such as this and there's other reports that verify there's furans and dioxins on the site. And at the very least, there should be warnings for people that there is contamination. Uh, you know, I'm uh, very upset about the fact that the city seems to think that they have unlimited time to take action and I think that delaying action is just leaving the city open to problems down the road. And when this report states it has not remediated the park standards, I cannot understand how the city of Port Alberni can operate it under the auspices of a park. So I would think that there should be some action taken at least some discussion in public to ascertain what exactly you're going to do. If you don't have the money, I really don't think that the people of Port Alberni, they don't have the money to fix their properties that are wayward. There's no sympathy for them. And I have no sympathy for the city of Port Alberni or the council. I have sympathy for children and dogs and people that go, th that go there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. And just to let you know, we will be having a conversation on this topic later in our meeting when we get to the report. Thank you. Would any other members of the public like to speak? Seeing none. Okay. Moving on to our delegations for the day. And the first one is the cruise ship committee. Come on forward. Madam Mayor, Councillors, um, pleased to uh, introduce uh, four folks, two from the Chamber, two from the Port Authority, who will be speaking to the plan, which is in your uh, Chamber folders uh, beside you. So uh, the plan and the schedule for 
the entertainment on the site uh, are there. And um, Bill uh, Collette and Rachel Lowe, who have uh, done the uh, uh, work on the uh, plan, uh, will come up uh, and speak first and um, answer any questions that you might have. We're 12 days away from our first visit. Mayor and Council, thanks very much. I, I didn't see the egg timer come out, so that's really good. You, you have 10 minutes. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, just before I start, though, uh, just a uh, happy belated Mother's Day to Councillor Solda, Councillor Haggard, and Mayor Minions. Hope, hope your family's treated you well. Um, really, yeah, I'm, I'm here more to answer questions. Um, I, I will say that um, we've done really quite well with uh, lots of support. Um, I should acknowledge Jeff Cook, Susan Lauder, Corey Anderson, and Carla Halverson uh, from four different First Nations that have kind of taken the lead on on developing a First Nations welcome. It should be fantastic, including a, uh, a canoe uh, escort into the harbor, which is uh, really wonderful. Uh, Todd Flero's looked after music and entertainment. He has a full slate of music lined up. Uh, Jen from our office and Angie Blake are looking after volunteers. We have about 35 now lined up for the uh, May 25th. Melissa Martin has done an exceptional job of of uh, organizing the street market. We have 45 vendors lined up, including at least one food truck. Um, uh, we're looking for more still, but 45 vendors. That in addition to the farmer's market, so um, should be very good. Uh, Rachel Lowe has uh, done our safety plan and our professional documentation, and as you can see, she's done a great job of that. Uh, Rihanna Miller from our office uh, visited uh, more than 60 businesses, so all of Harbor Key, Lower Argyle, Kingsway, uh, up Argyle up to here, and Third Avenue were all visited personally um, and, and you know reviewed with um, what to expect and that sort of thing. So, and tomorrow morning we're visiting with them again at a, at a meeting down at Harper Key. And of course the Port Authority and um, ADSS Athletic uh, Department have combined for a courtesy shuttle bus. So we have a map for that as well. So we'll be looping around on the hour um, it was about maybe 10 stops and um, so people can go to Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart or Roland Art Center or the Industrial Heritage Site, um, those types of places. So really that's um, in summary what we've got organized. I think it's looking very good and I applaud the city by the way for the, the work down at the Esso uh, station there and um, along Harbor Road. It's looking great, really good. Yeah, um, thank you to staff for that. I just drove down there a few days ago, and it's nice to see a separated walkway down there yeah, now. Um, it's and you know, small change, but it sure made a big difference. So, yeah, um, yeah it's looking much better. It's really good. Questions from council? Councillor, just one quick question: Has there been an appetite to uh, clean up some of the empty lots that are within short walking distance of the uh, cruise ships? Well, I'm not sure if I'm the person to ask for that. I have seen lots of positive activity down in the area. Um, and, you know, I, I know the mayor has, a, has a, a business going up there. I'm seeing people working around that area all the time, which is great. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't think I'm the right person to answer. Maybe, maybe Pat Deacon has, has more knowledge on that than I do. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This isn't a question, it's just a comment. Um, I did a little bit of work in place of Ron Polson because he's on medical leave right now, and I visited a view of the bigger stakeholders in the Harvey Key Argyle Road area, and honestly, I was a little bit nervous. I didn't know what the expectation was or what I was gonna be confronted with, and they were all extremely supportive of this in economic initiative for the community. So I just wanna say thank you to the committee for all the hard work you've done to bring it in and to put on this festival, not only for them, but for the locals as well. I'm certainly excited to go down there and Participate. Yeah, and if I may, I should add, add one more thing. Um, we've committed to ads in the newspaper, so we'll have a full page ad on Wednesday's paper uh, promoting this because we want the local community to go down there as well. So 
uh, that's important. So we'll be two Wednesdays in a row and then the Wednesday ahead of the next two uh, arrivals as well. And uh, one other thing I should comment on Port Boathouse. Um, they've um, stepped, stepped up and are helping us out. They're gonna remove all their boats from their side lot there, which is where the tour buses will um, park. So, and that's, that's very kind of Port Boathouse. They yeah. didn't have to do that, but they jumped at it and said yes. So it's really good. That's great, thanks yeah. for mentioning that. Any yeah. other questions from council? Okay, well on behalf of council, thank you there very you much for updating us. Looking forward to reading the plan and, um, and thanks for the work that you and the committee have yeah. done. Um, I know a few months ago we were saying, it seems like there's so much to do and not very much time. And um, with businesses that I've talked to in the community, it certainly seems like it has all really come together and um, yeah. not just come together, but come together with a lot of hard work. So thanks for all that it you guys have good. done. Yeah. Okay, great. thank thanks. you. Just close. I mean, the point of uh, giving you the plan, uh, uh, including a site plan, uh, is uh, for council to come back to us with the any question that might cross your mind. Uh, we think we've covered the bases uh, with respect to Councillor Corville's question about the empty lots. We'd love to see them cleaned up. Uh, there isn't the appetite in the private sector uh, and unfortunately at this point we have uh, no legal mechanism to force uh, the empty lots. We had originally hoped that we would have lots of uh, classic cars lining the street to take the eye off the lots and put them on the cars. Uh, that isn't happening. So, um, but the point of giving you the information is uh, if you have any questions, if you're hearing anything out there that you think may not be covered, please uh, let us know, get a question. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Bill and Rachel in particular for their work and Dave and Mike for the work on the port side, uh, making sure that the vessel will be here. It's the first visit of the MAZDAM, so it will be acknowledged with a plaque. Um, and uh, they've uh, been making the arrangements for the tender vessels and the, and the mooring, um, as well as the shuttle. And we are continuing to work to attract uh, cruise ships in future years, so. Thank you very much. I think, Bill, you might have been under, t under time until Pat got up. <laughs> but thank you for that. That's very <laughs> helpful information. Um, and just one other thing to comment, uh, since we have people from the Port Authority here, um, I was down at uh, Taiyi Landing a few days ago and I saw the um, kind of decorative lining you have along the fence there and that sure makes a big difference. So um, great work there and uh, we maybe we could even try to get something like that up on at least one of the fenced off, looks like a bomb went off lots on maybe second in Argyle. Um, so uh, before the cruise ships, um, but you know, recognizing that it's probably not not free to do that so we can talk about that later <laughs> but thank you for what you guys have done there it makes a big difference uh, okay and uh, our next delegation is from the Alberni Clay Aquat Health Network Marcy DeWitt thank you Thank you, Mayor and, Mayor and Council, for having me here today. It's always a pleasure to come speak. Um, we have been making an effort in the last couple years to ensure that we come to Council, at least annually, um, to talk a little bit about the health network. Uh, this year, it's a little bit uh, it's special because there's a lot of new members on Council. Um, so I'm Marcy DeWitt. I'm the coordinator for the Alberni Clyquot Health Network. I have been for the past uh, about four years. Uh, and I'm really just here to talk to you give you a quick brief overview of the Alberni Clyquot Health Network and tell you a few key points about the work that we're doing. Oh, that is definitely not the right button. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so middle button and not the, the forward buttons, gotcha. That's right, 
confusing. All right, got it. A <laughs> little bit different. Um, so a bit about us. We've been a network since 2011. Um, and what we do is we work um, with local decision makers around uh, the social determinants of health. So we are a very loose network. We don't have any actual structure. We're not a nonprofit um, or a private company. Um, but we pull together individuals from a variety of different industries, sectors, and interests in order to look at some of the bigger issues around health in our region. So we receive our funding through Island Health. Um, my coordination contract um, comes through those monies. Um, and then we bring together a variety of different individuals from different uh, organizations to speak to things like poverty reduction, transportation, housing, um, those things that impact our health greatly, um, but we don't actually have a health-related budget for. Um, so we have a very um, specific table of partners. Those are our kind of leaders within uh, within our group. This is our 2019 representation. Um, and then we also pull together action tables based on topics that have been identified from the region, from our community members that are of interest and that we can move forward action items on. Um, the rest of our ne network is quite nebul nebulous. We consider anybody living within the Alberni Clyquot Regional District a member of our network. More active members, obviously, are on our Facebook page, uh, newsletter, or something like that. So our Strategic plan uh, was revised in 2018. Uh, we came out with four, or sorry, five, four. <laughs> we used to have five, now we have four strategic priorities. Um, those are network development, community connectedness, building regional prosperity, and knowledge and capacity building. And those seem big and nebulous, and they kind of are. Uh, this is really quite big work. Um, and so we've gone into a little bit um, of detail in our strategic plan around what those mean. Um, and I'll dive into uh, a couple of those for you. Essentially, our network development uh, priority is really around ensuring that people know what we're doing. Uh, we have good communications, a good website, um, and frequent presentations. Community connectedness um, is really looking at transportation and the ways that we are able to access services. Um, so not just um, cars and buses, uh, but also active transportation, um, as well as the way that we are able to access services within our communities. So really looking at uh, the different ways that we're able to do this. This is one of our priority areas that we've seen the most traction. It's been the easiest to implement projects. Um, we've seen quite a lot of success, especially in our West Coast communities where transportation services are uh, the most minimal. Um, we're working with BC Transit to implement an actual transit service between Yuki and Tofino. Um, here in Port Alberni, we're working with uh, BC Transit and other stakeholders to really ensure that we're increasing um, transportation services for those requiring health services. Building regional prosperity um, is really looking at um, doing some poverty reduction work. Um, and last year, we had the pleasure of bringing together all the municipalities to do a signing for the Alberni Clyquat uh, Poverty Reduction Protocol. So Port Alberni uh, was one of the signees. Um, and we will be moving forward on work around that now that we've all settled into our new uh, leadership positions. Um, and we now know a little bit more about the provincial legislation that has just passed. So some exciting times around that. And we're looking forward to pulling you guys all back together um, to look at some action items around uh, poverty reduction in our area. And lastly, knowledge and capacity building. Um, this is, once again, one of those big nebulous pieces that we, uh, we named. Um, but really, it refers to those emergent issues in our communities um, that we know come up, sometimes out of the blue, sometimes not. So housing is one of those pieces that we all know um, is a big issue in all of our communities. Um, for the health network, uh, we don't quite know where our role is yet. So we don't know if we have a role there. We do know that we do have some um, areas where we can support. So we've come up with this kind of catch-all area so that we can support local leaders um, around some of these emergent issues around health around uh, and the wellness of our communities. Communications is the last uh, which fits into our network development and I touched on. But our website is there. Um, it's an interactive website with all of the reports um, and different interactive media that we've produced over the years. Um, please take a look if you're interested. And um, we always have opportunities to engage through our newsletter, social media, and uh, my email as well. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Questions from Council? Councilor Curvio? Yeah, thank you for the uh, presentation, Marcy. A uh, question for you. Uh, you said you weren't too sure about where you fit in with in the health side of things. Um, one of the more visible uh, issues we seem to have is that of drug addiction. Is that a role that you play in? And you know, there was uh, uh, just a little bit more information. Recently there was that documentary that was doing the uh, rounds on Seattle is dying. Mm -hmm. And they have you know, much worse issues than we do. But you could see that there was some similarities. And um, in that documentary they talked about the um, uh, the only thing that in, in the states that was found to improve things was enforcement and intervention and they went to Rhode Island I think as an example. Is that a role you could play or is it a role that you can help um, facilitate or, or if not whose role is that? So we are participating in the work that's being done um, in this community as well as others um, around a community action table to look at the opioid crisis. Um, so there is a very um, specific and targeted initiative going forward, um, very active here in Port Alberni as well, um, around um, doing some interventions, doing some education, um, and also strengthening services here in the area. Um, and so um, our role in health specifically is not um, around acute services, um, but it is to look at the, the more generalized kind of areas. Um, so like I mentioned, housing and transportation that aren't linked into our health system, where we see these, um, I guess, crises and different things. Um, we're already seeing a very interesting and, um, I guess, dynamic network of individuals coming together um, to start talking about this. So at the CAT table here in Port Alberni, um, they do have representation from the RCMP mental health health. Um, so quite often we would play a role in ensuring that they get a big cross section of partners to the table, but they've really done a good job of doing that. Are the senior levels of government uh, participating at that CAT table? Um, I can't speak to that. Um, in the initial meetings that I was at, they were not, but I'm not sure about it now. Uh, not to my knowledge, but Dr. Hasselback is a participant, um, and he works with VHA. So I think that voice is definitely there. And in the Seattle is Dying documentary that I'm sure a lot of us have seen um, by this point, um, what they really highlight and focus on is opioid substitution therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a, a topic of conversation um, at that community action uh, team table um, yeah. pretty regularly. Okay. Yeah. We've been quite lucky, lucky yeah. with the uptake of our local physicians on that Absolutely. therapy. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just think there needs to be, you know, there seems to be a revolving door and the RCMP seem to be hamstrung and, you know, we see the same people over and over and over again go through the system and there's not that intervention there's not that facility where they could go and you know we're not doing anybody a favor by allowing them to come back out and steal to feed their drug addiction and you know hopefully at some point some level of government gets it together and there's a place for the courts to send people yeah mm -hmm. i think the it's a difficult issue because there's not one single simple fix or you know what works for some people doesn't work for others um other questions from counselors seeing none okay well i just want to thank you very much for um for coming and presenting um i do have the next um health network uh, table of partners meeting in my calendar so i'm looking forward to attending that and just um, getting a better understanding of um, all of the groups that we have in our community i think my biggest takeaway um, since getting elected to this role is how much good work there already is going on in our community and really just trying to get um, a better understanding of, of where the linkages and gaps are. And But it's great to see um, so much positive work being done already. So thanks for being a part of that. Thank you. We'll see you Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, we have no unfinished business. So on to staff reports. And the first one is accounts. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the certification of the Director of Finance dated May 13, 2019 be received and checks numbered 
646 to 143787 inclusive and payments of accounts totaling one million three hundred and eighty four thousand nine hundred and twenty seven dollars and forty seven cents be approved thank you is there a seconder second, any questions all in favor carried and item two from our economic development manager an update on the explore port alberni wanted to make council aware of uh, the initiative and that we are uh, moving forward with it. I would like to thank Councillor Poon and Haggard for uh, coming out on short notice uh, to a spontaneous uh, decision on our part to provide a launch for the hashtag Explore Port Alberni with the Seekers Media Group up at uh, the Roland Arts Centre. Uh, I think the report says anything, everything. I'm looking to <laughs> Alicia, our communications manager, to see if there's anything she would like to add. Okay. <laughs> so um, we are uh, going to be, we're launched into a, a full-on push with uh, social media on a number of fronts uh, this year. and. Uh, this is one of those. So if you do have questions, or you have comments, or uh, you'd uh, like to alert us to some goings on, please feel free to do so. Okay. Thank you. Questions from Council? Councillor Haggard? I just want to say thank you to you and your team. I think this is such a wonderful initiative to get some positive stories of Port Alberni out, out into the world. So, And that was a wonder, wonderful event. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just really echo that. Um, it is great to see so much positive content about our community on social media, um, including like the uh, water park picture that was put out there um, this past weekend. Got a ton of shares, really got people talking about um, the great assets that we do have in our community and these positive stories just, um, you know, go a long ways to building up what, what is going on. So thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no other questions. Thanks very much. Would someone like to move receipt of the economic development manager's report? Second. Second, Madam Mayor. All in favor. Carried. And our next report from our manager of bylaw services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's uh, been a few councils since I've stood up here. I'm usually on Davina's seat. <laughs> um, so I have before you today a uh, summary report with some statistics regarding um, the development to date of the bylaw services department. Uh, I thought the timeline would be appropriate. Um, if you look January to May 2018, that was the months leading up to the start of the bylaw services department being formed in early June. So I took the stats from there and compared it to where we are today, given that it is May 2019. Um, you've probably had a chance to, to read through, and I think you know, the overall comparison reflects you know, what, the strategic, what a strategic approach to a bylaw department looks like and what kind of results you can get uh, from that. So I'm just going to briefly go through uh, each component that I've outlined for you. So in terms of number of complaint calls, you can see um, in 2018 there were 146 and to date there are 395, which is quite an increase. And so the increase uh, when reviewed is not only the result of you know, taking a proactive approach to enforcement, uh, it's also from creating efficiencies within the department. So establishing processes and procedures um, to kind of prioritize what council and community's objectives were uh, from the department and also making sure that we're still being responsive to the complaint calls that we are receiving. Um, looking through the active and open files, uh, this is quite a significant number. So you can see out of 146 calls, 110 remained open in 2018. Um, I do want to comment and say, you know, at this time there was one bylaw officer uh, and he was doing it all. And this number no way, in no way, shape or form reflects his work ethic. It's just the reality of the situation he was in. He was responsible for receiving the calls, inputting the calls, responding to the calls and taking action. So 
Um, it was quite burdensome for him. Uh, and I can tell you even to date, as quick as we get calls in um, or closing a call, we're getting new calls in. So it's, it's pretty much on par on a daily basis. And just for council's awareness, when a call is open, um, that means that it's been generated. It doesn't necessarily mean that anything's been done with it. So it might have been opened in the past and a complainant never received a call back. Uh, it was in a queue to be responded to or um, it was being worked through for compliance. So you can see in this year with the formation of the bylaw department, uh, it's basically flipped on its head. So now we have 22.5% um, of all files are remaining open in comparison to 75% the previous year. Um, this is quite significant and I would say it's the result of not only our administration staff being able to assist in those processes, but also just the organization. Uh, having a manager in place has allowed the department to really hear what council and the community's priorities are and figuring a way to have a strategic approach to them and be able to get to them in an, uh, an efficient manner. So a similar stat uh, from the previous just said a bit differently. So in terms of completed calls, you can see that only 36 of 146 were completed in 2018, whereas 306 of 395 were completed. And so in my, in my entire career, I can say, uh, and I stand by this firmly from the time I was a bylaw officer doing the boots on the ground to any management position I'll take, um, we're in the business of customer service. We really are. That's what bylaw services is, and that should be really expressed to the community. So this number for me is significant. Um, we're able to respond to almost all of the complainants that phone in. Um, we have statistics that aren't demonstrated here to show that uh, a call is received that day. It's being input. It's being dispatched. It's being investigated, and people are being responded to in the same day. And I had a few calls my, my first few months here of people saying like, wow, I, I didn't expect to hear from you already, right? I, I usually don't get a call back. And so uh, the mentality has really shifted and changed in this community and that's really positive to see. It also creates confidence in the community, I will say that as well. People feel like they're being heard, right? And, and they're listening to, there's not that nobody, nobody cares mentality anymore, so. Um, in terms of number of tickets issued, I'll be honest, this is a statistic I don't enjoy reporting on. Um, like I said previous, I, I sincerely believe bylaw services is customer service based. Um, so voluntary compliance and education is what we strive for all the time. And so it's a hard stat for me to report, but I also think it's important. Um, you can see that to date we've issued 421 tickets. Um, that's significantly greater than, than the previous year. And I just wanted to put it up to demonstrate, you know, just the magnitude of the files that the two bylaw officers are handling. They're not just open and close files um, and people are, you know, voluntarily complying. It shows that there's some depth to the amount of work that they're carrying. And, you know, we are striving for that voluntary compliance, but sometimes it's just not achievable. So uh, that reflects that. And then I had um, just highlighted a few other programs that bylaw services has taken on um, at the start of this year and, and to date. So the two most notable would be the graffiti removal program. Um, and I really like the statistics here. Uh, we took it as a proactive program. So we did welcome people coming in and notifying us, but um, the stats here reflect the proactive calls that our bylaw officers went out and found themselves. So there were 49 files generated, which means 49 different properties that had graffiti on them. You can see to date, there's only five remaining open and they are being responded to and they are in that um, gaining compliance process. They're not just sitting waiting in queue. You can see of that, there's obviously 44 of those completed and to date we've issued uh, 33 vouchers to members of the community to participate in the graffiti removal program. And then the last point I do just wanna highlight again, I don't like the, the fines issued stat, but at the same time, I think this is an important one. Out of 49 different properties, there were only nine fines issued, which means the other 40 were willing to come into compliance voluntarily or participate in the program. So I think that's a really strong success story for this program. And then finally, the Enhanced Security Initiative Program, so kind of as an update as well, it did wrap up. So um, there were 31 
successful applicants. Uh, this round we did um, choose to focus on commercial properties. So there were 31 local businesses that were um, approved to participate in the matching funds. And we also offered a, a, an option. So with your security enhancements, um, each of the 31 businesses has an opportunity to engage one-on-one -on -one with an RCMP officer to go over SEPTED, so um, crime prevention through environmental design, in terms of placement and, and you know recommendations. And I think this is a really positive public engagement opportunity. Um, it gives local business owners a chance to feel you know comfort and confidence in talking to myself through bylaw services, but also the RCMP for input. So that's been a really uh, positive success story as well. That's it, that's all I have for you. Kay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions from Council? Councillor Solda. So on the security enhancement, so we're finished that now for this year? The program that was run was for the 2018 funds, okay. actually. So we do have another 25,000 okay. that yes. council allotted, so we will be running that shortly. Okay, because I've had um, some people say they, they've applied, they haven't heard anything in that. So how long does it take from the point that they send it to the city to get notified, yay or nay type of thing? Sure. Being a pilot program, I will be honest, it took longer than anticipated to kind of work out the kinks. Um, if you're referring to anyone that hasn't heard back yet, um, I would say that's no longer the case as of today's date. All okay. applicants that applied were actually all successful. So we had 31 applicants and 31 were approved, um, some with modified funds, but we were able to accommodate every business that applied. So I've re to date, I've returned everyone's notification. Okay, super. So for the new program now, they can, is it, are they eligible now to apply now or do, is there a date? Madam Mayor, the application um, process hasn't been posted yet, but there will be a, a one month window similar to the last process, but um, it, it hasn't gone out yet and we haven't looked to uh, to post it as of yet. Okay, and I really like the stats. I, I'm a bylaw nut and I totally agree with those, like those stats. And I have some questions regarding some of the buildings. Is this a time to ask with the bylaw? Sure. Up here. Okay, so I have a couple of questions um, regarding some of the things like the Argyle building, second in Argyle, how long, do we have anything in our bylaws to say how long a burnout building can stay in the formation is what we see on Argyle? Because that's been there for a number of years and I'm sorry, I have a problem with that. Do you mean the empty lot? The, it, well, it's- Because there's two buildings also. Okay, it's the one that's burnt and it's just got the form going down the Argyle? Empty lot. I, I could say the person's name, but I'm not, so that's why I'm leaving it. Across from around the Thunderbird building. No. No? <laughs> Second in Argyle. Right? Second Ar okay. We know the building I, you're talking about. Yes, that yes. one. <laughs> On Argyle Street, so sorry. No, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have actually, this specific lot, I actually have had communication with um, I'll say a third party to the individual who owns the property, and they actually are looking to um, remediate that property for the purpose of selling it. Um, but in terms of what our powers would be to kind of give mm -hmm. that push, it's, it's very limited. Empty lots are a, a hot button, I would say, um, in this community, and, and there's very limited powers that we do have through our bylaws at this time to but we could write a bylaw to say like two years because I mean some people don't um, start construction or can't start construction until insurance. I'm sorry, after five years being in that same condition, there should be some kind of bylaw saying either you take it all apart and make it, it back to green grass or something instead of being right in the town. I think let's not get into a conversation okay. on um, what our powers could be with vacant lots right now, sure. but maybe we okay. should bring that forward as a notice of motion at the end of this meeting. I would love to. Um, because I think that's a common concern for all of us on okay. council. And, and the other thing too is like, um, as an example, the squash court, it's been in the, trying to be renovated for a long time. Could, do you have an update on that or do you know anything about that? I do not, Madam Mayor. Okay, because uh, you know, building construction, then you go across the street to the Frigstead Apartments, we call it the Frig, I call it the Frigstead Apartments, and um, hanging off the balcony, and, and I worry about that because I drove up here, drove, drove up here from work, and um, there's stuff hanging off the built, um, 
the patio up there and it can fall on people's heads and stuff like that so that I have concerns on that um, we've heard a lot and I'm sure mayor you've heard this too about the city lands for um, mowing and cleaning up our our own grass and stuff like that I know there's probably a um, I know we have alternate days and different things that schedule that we do clean the grass and stuff like that so do you know anything about that and or who do I, I talk think that to? would be a for our parks manager okay and also um, the, could is it possible do we talk to the above regarding the update on the arrow view we know but the public's been asking and who do we talk to is that the CAO or to bylaws would you like to give an update on the arrow view I do madam mayor <laughs> I feel like every time I say I have an update, I say almost there, and then <laughs> and then I get an update, you know, a month a month or two later. I I can tell you I have been working with our director of engineering as well, who's who's come onto the project, and um, it it really is out of staff staff's hands at this point. Uh, we have connected with an engineer, um, and the engineer is just putting the final touches on the tender document and. Uh, it was last week that I said I had a deadline, and now that I'm being told this week, but, but staff has done everything in their power to push this project forward. And it's getting very close. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that for now, thank you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great report, Flynn. I'm very pleased with your progress since you've been here. Um, Counting the post boxes that still have tags, is that yep. something we can deal with, or have you dealt with? Absolutely, so through you, Madam Mayor. So we've been, um, one of our bylaw officers has taken on the graffiti program and has done a fantastic job, um, truly. And so part of that is he's been brainstorming other options. So he's reached out to Canada Post directly and he's had meetings um, with some uh, the higher managers than just you know at, at the store locations. And they're very open to uh, considering a wrap program for their boxes to, to kind of cover up the graffiti. Um, our bylaw officer has also been in touch with um, someone in the community who does uh, mural painting and the murals are done by um, almost like a restorative justi justice program, youths that have been in trouble with the law. Um, but he's taken a program on, on himself to um, reach out to them and offer them, you know, teaching them how to graffiti properly. And there's actually a couple murals around town that they've done recently on private property. So right now we're actually trying to connect different organizations together to, to get things like um, garbage cans and Canada Post boxes cleaned up as well. That's great. Okay, thank you. Councillor Poon, did you have your hand up? Um, I just wanted to know um, of the fines that you've issued, uh, what's the collection rate? For you, Madam Mayor, so you'll see there's a little asterisk at the bottom saying that the, the fine amounts uh, are for the fines issued, not collected. Um, we're actually much higher than uh, previous years when I looked back. So um, off the top of my head, I believe the collection rate was just over uh, 25 to 30 percent. Um, in previous years, um, your collection rate was about 10 to 15 percent for bylaw fines. And so um, even though the stats are reflecting <coughs> that this is how many tickets have been issued, they could have been issued the, the day I pulled that stat, which means that they still have 60 days to pay their fine. So um, I'm very optimistic that we can get on par with the rest of the province at around 30 to 40 percent. Great. Thanks Thank for the report. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you tell me what the definition of a completed file is? Is that when the complaint comes into compliance? Okay. So that would be... Um, once a file has been closed. So a bylaw officer has been um, directed to not close a file until either full compliance has been reached or there's no validity to the complaint. So those are the two. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Corbeil, do you have any comments? Well, I'll ask one question then. Why is it that there are more tickets issued, 421, than actual complaints or actual completed Files is that because there's multiple tickets to a to a file? That's correct. So there's actually two answers to that. So you you've hit the first one. There might be multiple fines issued. Um, the tickets also capture parking tickets, so that would encapsulate where um, it's our parking commissioner issuing the fine, not necessarily the bylaw officer, and there was no file attached. Okay. Okay. 
Seeing this, no further questions. Um, just want to thank you very much for this report. Um, great to have. Sorry, we won't get to see another one. <laughs> Uh, so I know this is public now um, that um, you'll be leaving us, which we are very sad to hear. Um, and on behalf of council, I know you'll probably be at another council meeting, but just want to really thank you for all of the work that you've done um, and just the way that you have transformed this department on behalf of the city. Um, it is fantastic to see as a community what we're able to do when we hold ourselves to a higher standard. So thank you personally for all the work you've done here. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, can I just add to that as well? I don't know you personally at all, but professionally, you're always so professional and you're extremely thorough. When you get asked a question, you know the answer. You've done your work. So I really appreciate working with someone who is as thorough as you are. So thank you so much. You're going to be very missed. Anyone else want to make comments? Maybe we can get him to stay. <laughs> 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 Madam Mayor, if I may, I do have a couple comments I'd like to, to respond. Um, I have been, been offered a new opportunity, and it is in Ontario. Um, and I, I brought up this story to uh, some other managers, and I think it's appropriate to, to share here with you today in the community. So Are they going to subscribe? I, I hope not. <laughs> Uh, a, a colleague here, um, when he found out I was leaving, he, he came storming up and he said, you know, I'd, I'd, li I'd really like, you know, I'm sorry you're leaving, but I'd really like to sit down with you and understand, you know, how the city of Port Alberni can, can retain, you know, good mm -hmm. professional staff. And, you know, the truth is that there's nothing more that could have been done. Um, my decision to leave is solely personal. Uh, I'm from Ontario. My family's back there. And it's, it should really not be reflective of my work environment or this community. It was a really hard decision because I love the people I work with and I really truly appreciate mayor and council in this community. And I do, uh, I've purchased a home here and I do plan on keeping it here because I still want to remain a part of this community in, in some regard. And I, I just have to say, you know, it's a, it's a very rare and incredible um, feeling to have management and staff um, who, who really guide you and, and recognize you know, what, what my potential is and help me thrive and develop. And to have that in you know, senior management staff is significant. And I really do feel privileged and lucky to have had what is a short time here. <laughs> um, it really has been magnific magnificent. And I think the community should be aware that the staff you have here are really incredible. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much. Any further comments? Seeing none? Okay, thank you very much for the report. Okay, item four from our manager of communications, council support for urban communities partnering for reconciliation grant. Come on forward. Thank you, Madam Mayor, thank you, council. I'm a little verklempt by Flynn's words there, he will be missed. Um, but on a brighter note, um, as you know, I am the administrative lead for our Reconciliation Committee, which was originally formed back in September of 2017. And as the administrative lead, I'm constantly looking for funding opportunities to help further the dialogue within our community around reconciliation. Uh, recently, an opportunity came up with UBCM on a pilot project that they have launched called Urban Communities Partnering for Reconciliation. And this is a grant of upwards of $10,000 to uh, help promote events, positive dialogue, uh, connectedness, and partnerships with our, uh, not only our urban First Nations, but also our local First Nations. So um, I'm standing here today in front of council seeking your support um, for the city's application for a grant uh, totaling $10,000. I'm going for the full shebang. Um, and for the associated activities in relation to that grant and overall grant management. Thank you very much. Council, any questions? Seeing none. Councillor Washington, would you like to read the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the report from the communications manager dated May 7, 2019 be received and the Council for the City of Port Alberni support the city's application to the UBCM for funding through the Urban Communities Partnering for Reconciliation Pilot Program for activities as outlined in its willingness to provide overall grant management. Thank you. Is there a seconder? 
Okay, and just on as co-chair of the Reconciliation Committee, I want to really thank you for um, all of the staff support that you have provided to us. Um, I know the entire committee has been just really appreciative of not only your support, but uh, the CAO's support as well through the process. So thanks for being a part of it. Thank you, Heather. Since I know we're, our work is wrapping up and yes. on that committee. It's been an honor, so thank you for that. Any further comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Carried, thanks very much. And on a less positive note, CAO item five, um, the stage one environmental review report on McLean Mill. Madam Mayor, um, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so the council is aware that um, the city undertook um, or retained a contractor to undertake a stage one environmental review of the McLean Mill um, site. And we've received the um, stage one report, 954 pages. I I believe the, the report is available on the city's website the full report in your in your agenda package I, I believe there's the first seven pages of that report which is the executive summary uh, the report um, uh, so stage one review is um, is, is basically a, a documentation uh, review and interviews that sort of thing gathering information to find out where um, one might or to, to I guess to find out if um, actual chemical testing is required and if so where on the site and so um, that that level one was done a um, number of interviews a, a lot of um, document um, examination the report recommends 19 sites 19 locations on the site where they um, recommend that level two testing be done and um, the estimated cost for that would be in the neighborhood of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so uh, basically a stage two environmental review of two hundred fifty thousand dollars to undertake that um, the uh, consultant did, uh, as you'll see on the screen right now, did, did break down the 14, or sorry, the 19 recommendations into um, four prior, what they call a priority cat categories. And the first priority category um, contains two sites, um, site five and 14, um, areas of environmental concern, uh, the gas and oil shed and the mill pond. And the consultant um, suggested that we might want to undertake that work first and at the same time that we do the dam remediation work, which is pending, because there might be some synergies with equipment use and uh, such, and, and some of that work would occur in the same vicinity. Um, so my recommendation to council is that um, we not make that decision today. Um, we, have, we have not identified any funding in the current financial plan for a stage two environmental assessment. Um, if we are going to do the entire um, stage two environmental assessment in one in one contract, then the magnitude of that of that cost would drive us toward a tender or RFP um, process to determine the best value for the city and the and the the best contractor. Um, and if we were to consider to do that, just that first um, category, those two sites. Um, that might dr we don't have a budget for that and that might drive that dam remediation project over budget so i'm i'm recommending that um, we take no action today um, until we have the dam um, remediation um, bid prices in hand that'll inform us if we have enough money in that in that project to do that work um, or if there's any capacity in that budget to do more work and uh, also staff are investigating uh, potential grant sources so um, I'd like a little bit of time for staff to fully, um, fully search for, for grant opportunities. It might be that we can find some grants to offset some of this cost. So Madam Mayor, I'm happy to answer questions if you like. Thank you very much. Questions from Council? Councilor Corpiel. One question I, I have, and uh, maybe the CAO can answer this. They talked about the uh, dip tank where it is today. And last year we seen a report that said the dip tank was moved in 1965 to its current location. Do you know if they are looking in that area for potential pentachlorophenols and chemicals of that nature? And, th and that area being back, I guess, to the, is it the north end of the, the mill? And the second question I guess I have, and maybe we need to ask that Tara West, is um, Mr. Adams' concern is there areas there that uh, potentially are so polluted that we should be uh, fencing them off so the general public uh, can't even access them? 
Madam Mayor, on the first question, the former dip tank location, I haven't read the, the recommendations for that specific point, so I would go back and look at that, and I'll interact with the, the consultant to see if they considered that in, um, in their assessment. Um, on the second point, um, concerns about safety for the public on site, um, I'm not qualified to make that, that comment, and I wouldn't even suggest that the, I mean, the consultant obviously is more qualified, I would suggest that if Council wants input on that question, that we ask, ask Dr. Hasselback to review the report and make recommendations to Council. Thank you, and I actually have that written down here. Um, Dr. Hasselback, can we get an, an, a professional opinion on whether or not it is safe to keep the site open? Um, I think our speaker earlier today made some great points that we, and this is not our area of expertise, um, I can't say any more than you can or anyone else on this Council um, if this site should be open or not, I think we need an outside source to give us that answer. Um, so what would the process look like for that? Madam Mayor, it, it might be as simple as um, forwarding the, the, the report to Dr. Hasselback, asking him to come as a delegation to council and provide comment. Okay, and I will recognize you to speak after um, we go through council questions. We don't normally take speakers partway through the meeting, but I'll give you an opportunity. Um, the next speaker I had was Councillor Haggard. Thank you, but I think you've kind of answered my question. Great. Councillor Solta. Yeah. Um, Madam Mayor, I have a concern. We have a concert that's going to be there, and there's, you could be two to 3,000 people, right? We don't know how many people they've sold tickets to. That's a lot of young people, all, actually all ages, running around on McLean's Mill, and there could be some serious problems there. And then if we canceled, if there is some problems there, and we canceled a concert in the past since I was a promoter for 15 years, you still would have to pay all the entertainment in that, and that could come back to us to do that. So I think we need to do it sooner than later, and I have concerns regarding that many people on a property that um, we're not sure. Thank you, so, um, and I would agree, I think this needs to be done sooner rather than later. Um, it's, I mean, it's easy for us to read through these, this report and um, make assumptions, but we really <laughs> don't have any qualified advice on, on what the right move forward is right now. Totally. Um, did I see any other hands? Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I, I have to agree because your COCs and your PCOCs, which contaminates a concern and potential contaminants of concern, yeah. If left undisturbed, are they harmful or are they not harmful? Uh, again, you can read this thing 10 different ways and come up with 10 different answers. So uh, I'm thinking uh, we've got to uh, talk to Dr. Hasselback and see what he has to say. Because um, like you say, that speaker, the speaker's quite concerned that was here this morning. So um, no, I think we need to, uh, even, even if we just get something from Dr. Hasselback short term, mm -hmm. That'd be sure. awesome. For sure. And Mr. Adams, if you want to speak, just please come forward um, and we'll give you another three minutes to speak. So, uh, in looking over this issue here, uh, Dr. Hasselbeck is not a qualified person to make an answer for you. You. I would give you the name of a professional who I've spoken to, and he is Dr. Geist, who is a toxicologist, and also uh, renowned in Canada for his work with pollution, uh, and he's also made discoveries, he has written books. He's from the University of Saskatchewan, and this is a person that is qualified. Dr. Hasselback, as far as I can see in his documentation, is not qualified. So I would say that if the city was to entertain a person that deals with these situations, of which these undisturbed and that, he understands and knows that. And there's also a Dr. Blakely from the University of Saskatchewan. But I would suggest that Dr. Geist would be the person to speak to. And furthermore, if you were to get a government grant, he has told me that he is one of the renowned people in Canada to actually get grant money and take care of these problems. 
But in the meantime, I'm just telling you that Dr. Hasselbeck, you could ask your lawyers, is not a toxicologist or an epidemiologist. And so far, I have seen in my statement that Dr. Hasselbeck also uh, hasn't done too well with the septic problem at McLean's Mill. But we'll leave that out, and I would suggest that Dr. Geist is the person. Thank you for that. So Dr. Hasselbach is our medical officer for our area, so yeah, he would be a part of the process, and if he's not qualified, he could assist us in pointing us in the right direction as well. I have seen our staff note down the names that you've given, so um, we would explore all of our options. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, just further conversation. Um, I have a concern over um, waiting, and I know that we had this conversation at budget time as well when we were talking about whether or not to proceed with the dam project. Um, I see that the dam project, we have a way, I know that it needs to be done eventually, but we have a way of putting off any immediate risk by restricting vehicle traffic. Um, there is no way of putting off, from what I can see, any potential immediate risk um, with the contamination. And so I know that we decided to go forward with the dam project, but I still don't feel entirely comfortable with that. Um, I see the contamination as a higher risk than the dam. And I see that um, we are moving forward with the dam because it's inconvenient to ask vehicles to not drive over the dam. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'm fine with getting the tenders and seeing where the budget comes in and seeing if there's room to accommodate some of this work as well. Um, but I'm not positive after we get the tenders that I'm going to feel comfortable moving forward with that dam project with this hanging over our heads currently. So um, I'll let council respond to that. And if uh, CAO has any comments as well, um, Councillor Solbach. I would concur with you. My, my problem with that, if there's um, some health risks, they should, it should come number one. And I also look at costs. If we wait down the road to do this, it's going to escalate. And we're going to still be in the same situation trying to figure out where we're going to get the money. And in the end, it'll be the taxpayers that will be paying. So I think number one should be health and cars second. So I would agree. Councillor Poon. Uh, yeah, I agree with both of you. And um, I think there's more than one way to get to the side of the dam. So. There's really no reason for us to um, prioritize that um, over contamination. Any other comments from Council? CAO, could you speak more to the process and what uh, you propose? Madam Mayor, you know, we talked about the dam a lot in the past, and uh, I've encouraged Council to stay the course. It's work that we're, I, I believe we're going to have to do regardless. Um, and. Um, and we, owe it, we have an onus of responsibility to downstream um, property owners um, to maintain a safe dam, um, as well as um, to not have um, contaminants migrating off the site. Um, if, if, we're, if the city's not intending to grant a contract, then we should not put out tenders and put contractors through the work of establish, uh, developing bids um, if we don't have an intention of granting that work. So if council um, is inclined to not proceed with that project, better to tell us now, although I hope you proceed with the project. Councillor Silva. So if we make a list of what's more important, if we put down all the, the points down and all the points for the health, what would come stronger on the list? You know, that's how I'm looking at it. And, and also with Dr. Hasselbeck referring looking at the bigger picture or making a, a referral to whomever that has to look at um, is is McLean's mill got some serious issues what should come first the horse or the cart right type of thing so maybe CEO you can answer that or is <laughs> however maybe you can I answer that maybe <laughs> no, maybe because I'm not an expert I'm just looking at a different picture sorry <laughs> none of us are experts Dr. Hasselbeck is a medical health officer he has access to if he doesn't have the knowledge he has access to people who have the knowledge mm -hmm. I would suggest that um, you not make a decision based on um, perception and, and fear and um, ask the ask the, the right people 
the right questions. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I thought the reason we were going ahead with the dam was because there was contaminants leaking into the water downstream to property owners. No? No, the reason we're proceeding with the dam work is because it was left over from 2014 when we did the, we relocated the stream. We were aware there were some, some issues in the dam that needed to be remediated and we didn't do the work at that time. Um, that came to light again in 2018 when some work was done on the dam and uh, some concerns raised around water quality, which caused us to, to do a stage one environmental review of the entire site and um, introduced us to the dam inspector again and, uh, and got us a ticket, two tickets, I believe, and um, for mismanaging our dam. And uh, so, yeah, a fair bit of, um, if, if I think about it, we had a fair bit of discussion around the dam. Um, and we're going to continue to discuss that dam until we fix it. Yep. So we can, we can, I think we can repair it now with the budget we have, um, tender documents ready to go, and we can look for grant opportunities for remediation of, uh, or to, to undertake the uh, stage two review of the site. Um, we're not likely to get grant funding for dam remediation. I think we're more likely to get funding for a stage two review of, of environmental um, concerns in my opinion, and I'm, on, I'm not expert in this. I think we're, I've said it before, I think we're gonna end up fixing the dam and we're gonna end up um, dealing with contamination on the site. We're, I don't think we're gonna avoid either issue. <coughs> Councillor Soldat, do you have another yeah. comment? Just, just again, we have a concert that's gonna ha have a whole lot of people at McLean's Mill and um, probably more so than like, tourists that go through the mill. How are we going to deal with the contaminants and not being disturbed? Because they're going to be not in one area. They're going to be moving around at McLean's Mill. Plus, with the water um, quality and stuff, have we looked and talked to the people who are organizing the concert? How are we mitigating some of the issues that we have at McLean's Mill with the concert? Have we looked? Sorry, it's important, and I think we need to deal with this. I don't have an answer for that. Um, so I, I expect the concert goers will not be swimming in the log pond. Um, and so <laughs> and I, not. that's not, I'm not being flippant. Um, we better put a sign up. <laughs> there, there, was, there was some, some concern about um, soil and water quality in the log pond. Um, the site's been open to the public since the early 90s, I recall. And um, lots of people on site um, for a long time. And we have a stage one report that says there's 19 areas that we should do further testing to determine the extent to which there might be, to extent to which there is contamination and in four of the sites where there might be contamination. I, I don't see a smoking gun here that, that would tell us that we need to close the site or, or limit the, the use of the site other than um, I wouldn't have people excavating, for example, or, you know, I, I'm trying not to be flippant here. I don't see, I don't see a smoking gun here. I'm not the expert. If you would like me to take action, if you'd like me to stand down the concert or put limitations on it. Um, I will do that. So, oh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I agree with our CAO. Um, the, the, the report is, the, the word concern pops up a lot in that report with the COCs and the PCOCs, but um, it hasn't been, we haven't added to the problem since 1965. Uh, we've been open since the 90s, and we haven't had any major issues with the participants or anybody on, on the ground. Um, I tend to agree with our CAO that, uh, no, there isn't a smoking gun there. I, I understand Councillor Solda's concerns, but uh, uh, had this report not been in by now, we would have gone ahead with it anyway. Um, these reports are they need to be really studied, like like the what percentage of, of contaminants and such. Um, I think uh, I think we should go with the recommendation from the CAO. Thanks, Councillor Washington. Um, I think my concern is that although the site has been open since the 90s, it doesn't mean it necessarily is safe for people to be at, um, and we don't have that information yet. So um, now we are getting some information on contamination, and um, some certainly what I read. Um, gives me concern. Um, I'm not suggesting we close the site, um, call off the concert, anything like that, but um, I think we need 
at least an opinion from a professional um, to make that call because we do have this information in front of us now. And we are not professionals to um, determine if it is safe for people to use this site or not. I would hope and expect that it is. Um, but I think we, at the very minimum, need a professional opinion as soon as possible since this is in front of us to advise us on whether or not um, it is just business as usual but we should do the testing you know stage two testing to get more information um, I mean hopefully that is the answer that we get but I just don't think that we can make that call based on the information we have in front of us um, I'm wondering if a route to move forward would be to uh, before we put out the to intend to move forward with the tender package still for the dam remediation, but to wait on releasing it until we hear from Dr. Hasselback. Um, could we turn that around reasonably quickly? I will reach out to Dr. Hasselback today and uh, see what his availability is. Okay. How would council feel about that path forward? Madam Mayor, am I hearing from Council that you don't want the tender documents released for the dam until after you hear from the... Is that the consensus of Council? <laughs> Maybe Madam, not the consensus over here. Madam Mayor, would you, would you, would you, would you vote on that matter, please? That would help you. Help. For sure. So uh, what my suggestion was is that we hear from Dr. Hasselback before, to be clear, to, um, before we put out the tender package. That doesn't mean we don't intend with moving forward on the tender, but we wait a couple weeks um, and get an opinion from Dr. Hasselback rather than releasing the tender tomorrow. Second. Okay, I made a motion, I guess. <laughs> it's seconded. And if we'd like to speak to it, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm not seeing that we're talking the same thing here. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing that we have to repair the, the damn dam. Um, <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> it has to get done no matter what. Yeah. So uh, the sooner the better for that and then in the meantime, we can get our expert in and look at this report and put it out in plain English for everybody because, uh, like I say, that's, there's more acronyms in there than, than you can shake a stick at. And, and to go through it and, and to everything is potential and concern. And, and I think if you went to just about any business where there was any service station or whatever we have left of service stations, I mean, you probably get the same kind of report. So you shouldn't be going into that ser service station and buying your Slurpee because, you know, there's contamination of concern because there was a fuel pump there before. So it's, 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 I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather go ahead with the CAO's recommendation. Okay, Councillor Haggard. I agree with Councillor Washington and the CAO. We've already been ticketed twice. The downwork has to be done no matter what. And there is contaminants in the water, so I think that has to be fixed. And I'm no expert, but what little bit I know, as long as you don't go digging in the dirt, you're gonna be fine. If you're walking on it, I don't think there's an issue with health concerns. Councillor Solda. Um, Madam Mayor, I believe the CAO said, if we're gonna put a halt on fixing the dam, why do the tenders at this moment? He did say that earlier. So why go through all that and send it out if we're not gonna do it so we can fix the problem with the other problem. So I like the motion you made because if we're going to put a hold on it, why waste all everybody's time? And um, that's where I'm standing at. Councillor Corbiel. While I agree with uh, Councillor Washington, I, we're only talking two weeks and we really should be erring on the side of caution here and and I think this also will uh, put a bit of a, a sense of urgency to whether it's Hasselback or uh, the, the fellow Mr. Adams talked about somebody to look at this and give us some professional advice and if you know if as long as we don't dig in it and in two weeks time you know we can then put out the tender so be it it's two weeks not the not that long of a time frame. Mm -hmm. Councillor Poon. I agree with Councillor Corbeil. <laughs> Thank you for your concise points. Um, so I, I I agree with um, you know the entire conversation here. Um, I think my intent is not to um, not do the dam work, but as a absolute last resort, if we are told that there is a serious concern 
um, that we need to address immediately, then we absolutely can not do the dam work this year or next year, and we can close the dam to vehicle traffic. And that can be our, our plan for managing the dam, um, or at least get advice on that. Um, whereas we may not have another way to go to with the cam contamination. So I just, I see the contamination as a, our top priority um, and getting advice on that before we move forward and spend $250,000 elsewhere. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, have we not already been ticketed for the pond? We've had two, two, two fines against us or is it, is it an actual dollar fine or is it just a warning or? Uh, we paid, I think $400 on a fine for, for not um, ensuring due management of a dam or something to that effect. Okay. And you've already budgeted in a past budget for the repair of the dam? Uh, the money's budgeted $233,000 this year for dam repair. Um, the engineering work's largely done, and that budget also included the um, Stage 1 environmental review. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Okay, so on the motion to um, get a professional opinion from Dr. Hasselbeck, or related party and um, hold off until our next council meeting on releasing the tender package. All in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Um, before we move on from that, CAO, um, should we be discussing or giving, um, if we are holding off even on if we're holding off a couple more weeks on releasing the tender package to show that we are moving forward with managing the dam, should we be having a conversation around shutting it to vehicle traffic in the meantime, or are we able to just keep doing as we're doing with that? Uh, Madam Mayor, we've um, put a, a load limit on it, if you like, and I don't think it would be any less safe tomorrow than it is today um, based on your decision. Um, so we'll continue with a load limit on the, on the dam. Okay. Okay, and item six from the mechanical services superintendent and director of finance. Uh, we have a new, one new axum, one new tandem axle dump truck with snowplow package tender. We have the report in front of us. Council, are there any questions on this report? Seeing none. <laughs> Councillor Washington. Thank you. Um, just in the award to the PNR Truck Center, just so Council knows, uh, PNR Truck Center has also opened up a new branch last week in Nanaimo, so they're closer than closer than Duncan. And and to also add to that, uh, they have uh, come to an affiliation with a local truck repair company that. Uh, is fairly new to Port Alberni called Aggressive Truck Repair who also have all the software and uh, all the Detroit diesel, which I'm assuming the engine is gonna be a DD13. Um, we have all, they have all that <laughs> so that they can, uh, so if there's something that's go wrong with the new vehicle, it can be assessed locally rather than having to drive. It's not gonna go to Duncan, it's not gonna go to Nanaimo. We can, it can be done here and then taken from there. So it's just, uh, Good choice. That's great. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Madam Mayor, I'm thinking there could be a conflict of interest here based <laughs> on what I'm saying, but it's your decision. We might have just realized that. <laughs> Councillor Washington, would you like to recuse yourself? Although we, I agree, it's uh, fantastic to know that there's an affiliation. Well, I just, just so that I, I know that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we're purchasing, For sure. uh, you yeah. know, they say about the local stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. Um, Councillor Haggard, would you like to read the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the report dated April 30th, 2019 be received in Council for the City of Port Alberni Award tender 004-19 for new tandem axle dump truck with snowplow package including trade-in of 2002 Volvo dump truck to the low bidder PNR Truck Center Freightliner 114SD 
in the amount of $202,864.56 plus taxes with funds from the Equipment Replacement Reserve Fund. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Um, and I did have a question for Director of Finance, but I don't see Director of Finance, um, just regarding the Equipment Replacement Reserve Fund um, and the sustainability, um, given that a lot of our, a lot of the projects that we do fund through there um, end up coming in a little bit short. CAO. Um, Madam Mayor, some, some projects come in um, I don't want to say under budget, but uh, let, me, let me back up. The, the city maintains an equipment replacement reserve fund, which is an evergreen fund that um, when we buy a piece of heavy equipment like this, we determine what the, what the replacement cost would be. Oh, there she is. Director Rothwell. Question on um, equipment replacement reserve fund. Sorry, I did jog down. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question, please? Uh, just about the sustainability of the Equipment Replacement Reserve Fund, since um, a lot of our projects come in not quite enough, and we always note in the reports that it can sustain, um, but I'm just wondering if it can sustain long-term. Um, at one point a few years ago, we were given kind of a, a graph that showed some concerns about mm -hmm. the levels. Um, I know we have increased our contributions to it since, but just wondering about kind of the overall health of it in general and how much we can sustain. The overall health is good. Um, interest rates are going up and we've strategized the investments so we're getting better um, returns for the interest, um, plus the 3% increase every month that's coming from the operating fund. So um, the hits it's taking from the two <coughs> pieces of equipment today um, are are not substantial. If we're getting into, you know, fifty or sixty thousand dollars, maybe a hundred thousand dollars, then we maybe need to look at it. But for now, we're we're doing well. Okay. So thank you. You're welcome. Council questions. Okay. On the motion, all in favor. Carried. And item seven from the mechanical services superintendent and director of finance. Uh, oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> is, is there a conflict on this one? <laughs> That's right. I'm just going to read it out. Um, a new four-wheel drive tractor with side boom flail mower re request for proposals 00619. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Washington. Um, Council, any questions on this piece of equipment or um, anything on the report? Seeing none, Councillor Soldo, would you like to make the motion? Madam Mayor, I move that the report dated April 30th, 2019 be received in Council for the City of Port Alberni Award request for proposal 006-19 for a new wheel, for a new four wheel drive tractor and side boom flail mower, including trade in of the city's 2004 New Holland tractor and tiger flail mower, I probably spelled to um, Roland's machinery in the amount of 214,000 plus taxes and funds from the Equipment and Replacement Reserve Fund. Thank you, is there a seconder? Second. Yeah. Okay, and seeing no further comments, all in favor? Carried, great. <laughs> and item eight from the Chief Administrative Officer, the RFP for Harborview Lands. Madam Mayor, Council will recall that uh, I believe a month and a half ago, um, perhaps two months ago, we had a committee of the whole and a fair bit of input on uh, discussion on the um, how the city should proceed with the Harborview lands. Should we advertise it for sale? Should we um, use it in some other way? Council gave some direction um, to staff and the direction was to um, develop a request for proposals document, draft document, then bring it back to council for your review. So um, in your agenda attached to my report is a draft request for proposal document and um, there it is on the screen. And this is a great time for council to um, tell us if you like it, um, if you want us to issue it, if you want, or if you want us to make some changes to it. 
Thank you. Um, I just want to start by saying that um, it looks fantastic. Um, so thank you to, I think, mostly our manager of planning um, and everyone who's worked on it to put it together. Um, it, I think it highlights our community in a great way. So, um, so thanks for the work that you've done on this. Um, council, questions, comments? Councillor Haggard? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have two questions. First of all, what was the process for the First Nations consultation in this project? Were they consulted on this RFP at all? Uh, Madam Mayor, um, so just a sort of a definition, I guess. Uh, municipal government does not have an obligation to consult, um, big C consult with the First Nation, as does a federal government or a provincial government. Mm -hmm. So um, we like to use the term engage. So we, we um, in, so on some matters, the city engages with um, one or both First Nations. On this topic, we didn't, on this land, we didn't see it as a um, First Nations engagement matter, um, but we did have conversations with the shot First Nation um, because previously they had expressed an interest in that property. And uh, during that conversation, they, we had assured them that we would not proceed without having a conversation with them. So we had a conversation with the about this not because we needed to consult or engage, but because they had asked about it previously. Thank you. And my next question, point 6.2.2, uh, it says that the, uh, <coughs> the applicant has two weeks in order to prove they have funds for the project. I'm not sure, this is kind of my first experience with this kind of an RFP, is two weeks kind of standard time? Because coming from my banking background, that's not a very long time to get that process completed and get Sounds a little from aggressive the bank. to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought four weeks might be more appropriate. See you. Madam Mayor, this is a good time for me to tell you that um, when you were praising the document, it's a combination, this document, of work that um, Pat Deacon, our, our manager of um, economic development, had done um, in a few, year, a few years previous, and then uh, an update and a um, kind of a modernization. He's going to hit me if I say that, but, but that. Um, <laughs> of the document by um, manager of planning, uh, Caitlin McDougall. So I, I've said that uh, this, is, this document is Caitlin standing on Pat's shoulders. Um, <laughs> so that item uh, was in the original document and I'm gonna ask Pat to speak to that. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. Um, I really feel like I should pass the buck. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, if you've uh, stood on my shoulders to, uh, uh, to do this. So uh, the last time uh, that we actually issued an RFP for the Harbor View lands was in 2013. And we really did think at that time uh, that um, they should be able to uh, uh, come forward uh, with a letter of commitment. We thought if they were responding to the RFP, if they were uh, providing, uh, making an offer on the property, they would know what they had in hand. They should know uh, what they can go uh, with their financial institution. It's kind of like uh, getting pre-approved for a mortgage, you know what you can offer. And uh, understanding that, uh, times have changed. Uh, that was um, six years ago. Uh, uh, many financial institutions are much busier, so uh, if you want to extend that time, we can do, th uh, that can be done. And Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, I think it would be reasonable to change it to four weeks, um, just to not put excess pressure on, even if somebody knows how much they kind of have access to, sometimes you know, you can't get anything finalized until you have your plans finalized. Um, I have a number of other changes um, to talk about, so I'll just see if there are other comments first from councillors. Um, so, a few things that I um, wanted to add in, um, because we have had considerable conversation in our community um, about this piece of property, um, I think that um, 
And I think the overwhelming feeling is that the community very much values the front stand of trees. Um, that's certainly been consistent as well when um, myself and the CAO have um, spoken with um, local First Nations as well. Um, so I think it's important to, I know we had originally directed to um, include the entire property uh, with comments that we actually all kind of, you know, we all value the trees and didn't intend to have the trees all cut down. Um, I think it would give a higher level of comfort if we excluded the front tree portion um, and looked to keep that as a park. Um, recognizing that the lot lines are not drawn out at this part or at this point so we can there's some kind of flexibility on where that lot line would become but I'm wondering how council would feel about that councillor Silva just curious to, I agree there's you don't need to cut down all the trees and everything like that and that was the big issue last time this property went up so I'm just kind of curious when you talk about the front end trees, there's the Argyle side or facing the waterfront. That's the waterfront, right? Yeah. Facing the waterfront. And sometimes when develop, the developers are looking at, um, right? The I'm front. pointing at a picture. This yeah, is not sorry. the most scientific way of doing it. <laughs> there it is. Um, just the, the two point, two site description. Okay, portion, so yeah. when, when developers we're looking at that particular property, they like the idea where if they built a hotel or apartments, they do get some view of the waterfront. And so I, I personally believe there's a win-win situation where yes, some trees might have to come down, but in the, in the long picture, there's a lot of trees that could still be saved. And, and that might take away some of the, if, if you want to save that, all that mm -hmm. front end, you might lose your developer and that was my uh, my thought was that if the city if we take this portion out um, then the city retains control over which trees get cut down I we agree. don't have any kind of tree protection bylaw in our community right now so if we sell this entire m amount this entire parcel to a developer they can cut down come in and cut down any tree they want um, because we have literally no protection um, if we exclude it we can work with developers to say, you know, are there a couple that strategically need to come down? It's our land. We would be able to control which ones and where and how that happens. Um, there's also been a lot of concern over the eagle's nest. Um, and at first I kind of thought, well, maybe there's an eagle in that tree. Maybe people are exaggerating. And then um, the CAO and I were down there at the site one day uh, meeting with a couple people and all of a sudden an eagle flies over and lands in its nest. So there certainly is an eagle's nest um, in that stand of trees as well. Um, so it's, you know, I, I think that it is, um, as long as we are open to working with the right developer, I think that there is, it's an easy solution to just make sure that we retain the control. Um, so, you know, just seeing how council feels about that. Any other comments? Councillor Corbiel. Well, I totally agree with you. I think uh, that's always been the, the issue is the, the trees. And when you, when you look at that picture, you can almost see how just pruning a number of trees would yeah. still open up the viewscapes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, again, I agree with everything you said, and um, it gives us the ability to work with a, uh, you know, a proponent to f get an actual win-win out of this. Mm -hmm. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Under 4.5 number C, it says the degree to, it's part of the notes to potential respondents, the degree to which the mature trees in the Kingsway and Argyle properties are retained and are incorporated in the development, you know, I think that would be a strong enough for the developer, statement for the developer to follow? I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, it could be, but I don't know. CAO? Madam Mayor, as I see the document now, it says the, the entire property is for sale and um, the city will weigh the, the proposals based on how many trees that the developer, that the new purchaser owns, that they preserve. And I think what you're suggesting is that the city not sell the tree portion, in which case the city would decide if and when um, how to manage those trees. Mm -hmm. So the difference, I think, between the two conversations is do we sell the trees and then put covenants on them, or do we just continue to own the trees? Mm -hmm. Does that delineate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so Councillor Haggard, what's your feeling on that? 
My feeling is I think that we have to trust the developers will do the right thing. And when we evaluate their proposals, they'll have a plan in there for these trees. Like I can see a developer coming in, have a beautiful little park in there. Like why not that let them develop and make it nicer? Councillor Washington, do you have any comments? Councillor Poon? I agree with Councillor Haggard. I think that um, if we put too many restrictions on there, we may end up scaring people away. And we want as many proposals as we can get, I think. Mm -hmm. Councillor Sulta? Um, Madam Mayor, I think in the end, when we get, if we get three or four people saying, hey, we want to build or we, want, we have this project, in the end, we're going to be the decision makers. Mm -hmm. So I think that will, and, and they always come with concepts, con conceptual drawings and different things, although I've learned the hard way, it's not always what you see. So I think we need to talk when that comes forward. So CAO, what is another way that we could strengthen our control to make sure um, that I, I mean i i have just heard overwhelming support from the public for retaining the bulk of these trees um, i think people are very worried about losing what they see as the only green space in the harbor key waterfront area uh, so you asked about what's another way um, short of retaining ownership but another way might be to put a covenant on the trees so that no no trees can be taken down without prior approval of the city um, yeah, D and what does that mean? So does that mean that, that one day the, the trees are gone and then we have to penalize somebody? Because once they're gone, they're gone, right? Um, and I think this comes, for me, this comes down, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm slipping into policy here and I shouldn't be. For me, I think um, a, a number of voices in the community have, have suggested that those trees are valuable um, to the community and would like comfort to know that they're not going to go away. Mm -hmm. So if that, and I, again, that's policy. I, I shouldn't be having that discussion. That's my perception of that, that issue. Thank you. Okay. So it, when I envision a project on this site, um, I envision that we would have um, public space surrounding whatever um, development ends up going there. I mean, I know we've talked about, you know, would we allow townhouses where the space around is kind of their yard and we've kind of collectively as a council unofficially said, no, we want something where there's parkland around and surrounding, um, where maybe we build a boardwalk over, you know, overlooking the waterfront and the public and the community can still enjoy that land. Um, I see retaining the tree, ownership of the tree portion um, and working with a developer as another way to enhance that that's going to happen. Um, but if there's not a will on council to make that change, um, then I think just recognizing that we do have other ways to control and just remembering that um, the value that we're trying to, you know, get to is that we do want public land and we do want the bulk of the trees to remain there. Um, so I'll just uh, note some of my other suggested changes here as well. Um, some of them are minor, but under 1.2, um, kind of the first section about our community. One thing I think would be valuable to note in here would be something about um, our, because it's just this is just talking generally about us as a community, um, our process that we've gone through with reconciliation and that um, building relationships with First Nations is a, um, with our two local First Nations whose unceded territory we're on is a priority for us. Um, I think that's important to put in here, especially yeah. given the, um, given the importance of the waterfront area to our local First Nations. And then under 4.2, um, a couple ideas that I had. Councillor uh, Corbeil and I were at a Council of Forest Industries session or conference a couple weeks ago and a few weeks ago now. And um, all we heard about was developing using mass timbers um, and wood products. And I wonder if um, under evaluation criteria or something to do with um, you know, how we're going to, what style of development we're looking for, we should talk about wanting um, wood features in the, in the building. Um, it also was suggested to me that um, like a building like the Sashadid Min building would be beautiful on that site. And is there a way for us to encourage a First Nations 
um, kind of style or, or highlighting of history in any way. CAO. Madam, uh, Madam Mayor, just for Council's awareness, the city does have a wood first policy and um, this is a development permit area, so we, Council will have some um, uh, significant input into the, into the design of, of that building. If Council knows ahead of time that that is the look you want, then certainly it belongs in there. I'm good with that. So I wonder if we could put something referencing that policy into um, the RFP just to, I mean, would that mean that that's absolutely the only thing we're going to get or does it just, is there a way for us to just put in that it's a preference? Depends how you feel about it. If, if you want to make them aware of a wood first policy and um, that's one thing. If you want to say right up front that it will be a, a, a West Coast design um, wood frame building or, or something to that, that extent. I think and, I'd and like to make them aware of the policy. Madam Mayor, how does if, everyone if, else feel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Um, other comments from council? Nothing? Okay. Um, I think that's all I have then. So I would like to see um, us with c the kind of general direction that we've given, um, give approval for staff to make some changes and um, put the RFP out um, rather than bringing it specifically back to council. How does council feel about that? I'm okay. fine with that, Madam Mayor. Okay. And um, so we do have some comments in here. Um, we do have a few comments in here about the treed portions. Um, is there anything that we feel like we need to add? Councillor Corbett. I think we also have to uh, know the restrictions around uh, working close to an eagle's nest. I know in logging, if there's an eagle's nest, uh, there's an extremely huge buffer zone that has to be built into it. So it, it may take care of itself depending on what that buffer ends up looking like. I wonder if we could add something in um, under the 2.2, the properties um, that speaks to, you know, that there's mature trees that are valued to the community and park space. CEO? Madam Mayor, there is a, a section, I can't recall the number, that says um, to the developer, you need to know these, these things, yeah. like there's an industrial road there and that sort of thing. So we can add that, uh, that bullet. You need to know that there's a uh, possible, the possibility of an eagle's nest in the trees. Councillor Silva. Just a, just a quick question. What about the, there's supposed to be a mine underneath. There's always been that um, out there. So the developer, will that be in there? Who's going to do the, is it a geotech that gets done or how does that work? Madam Mayor, uh, through to Councillor Solda, uh, this conversation came up when we issued the RFP yes. in 2013. Uh, we could not uh, find any evidence of uh, the mine at that time. Uh, we've heard subsequent to that uh, that there was indeed a mine shaft going through uh, to a gambling joint um, <laughs> up, up the road. Uh, so it would be incumbent upon them to do a geotech survey not only because of the possibility of uh, a mine shaft there, but also just given the, um, I've, I think the sensitivity of the slope that goes down to Harbor View Road. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wonder if another thing we could add in is um, that in the general area, there are um, other buildings that kind of build off of First Nations um, kind of the building style and culture, culture like the Thunderbird building um, and highlighting that in the process, um, which might lead us to, to closer to getting um, a wood style building. Okay. So we haven't given any formal direction other than to strengthen a couple of things. Um, but I think for the things that we've talked about, is there a general consensus on council? Okay, CAO. Madam Mayor, I think we're good with the general consensus. Um, but I, I hate to ask, but I got to ask you about the trees. Do you want to retain ownership of the treat area or do you want to put it up for sale? I want to retain ownership. And, and I, I'd like to see council vote on that because we need direction. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we retain ownership of the treed portion um, and put the rest out for RFP. If there's a seconder. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I, 
you know, I recognizing that I think I'm the one who made the motion um, to last when we started this process to just put the entire portion up. Um, I understand not wanting to restrict um, the types of developments that come in, but I do think that we can um, show through wording in the RFP that the city is willing to work with a developer to develop lot lines that will work. Um, and you know, trim the trees, take down select trees if needed, um, but that I think it really sends the message that we value that space as a public space and we value the trees that are there. So um, that's what I'm putting forward. <laughs> Councillor Solda. Oh, Madam Mayor, I know you <laughs> love trees and I love trees too, but you're res really putting a restriction when we have something in there already saying about the trees. I know from past when, when we had developers interested and the trees was a big issue. Yes, they were. And um, again, I believe there's a win-win there. Some trees have to go because developers, when they build a hotel, a boutique hotel, as an example, there was an interest in a boutique hotel going in that spot. And it was the trees that was the big issue. And it didn't happen. Um, for well, one it didn't reason. happen for another reason. I Let's not put this one, on the trees. No, no, but for one reason or another, I was, <laughs> uh, right. if I had finished that. But still, we also had neighbors sure. that didn't want it, right? I mean, it was a great playground. It was a great park for the neighbors, too. So I think there's a win-win here. And owning every tree, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm there yet. Councillor Corbiel. Well, this, this issue seems to have come up over and over and over again, and it's still basically an empty uh, parking lot with, uh, with a bunch of trees. And uh, I think um, the motion we're talking about actually meets the objective of finally getting this developed, uh, keeping the majority of people that uh, want to see uh, the green space, uh, keeping them uh, on side. And, uh, I think um, if the city's willing to work with a uh, proponent, um, th this is the true win-win. And I think if uh, the First Nations uh, uh, have a, um, a concern about the, uh, the properties, um, at least we still have ownership of it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally in favor of the, the motion. Thank you. Other comments? Councillor Haggard. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to say I'm not against the trees. I want to keep the trees just like the rest of the community, but I think there's enough bullet points in here in the evaluation criteria and what we're looking for that the developer will know that we want to keep the trees. You might want to add something. The tree section of the lot is very important. The community want to keep it, but I think then the developer will develop it into a beautiful park. And I think we need to keep, the, keep that option open and let the developer do it, not us. Councillor Washington. Well, Madam Mayor, I, I'm looking at 6.2.4 and it says the City of Port Alberni reserves the right to reject or negotiate any or all offers. So I think that pretty much covers it there too. Okay. Councillor Poon. Okay. Okay. Well, not really, but I guess we could let you. <laughs> Come, come to the microphone so people can hear you. Jim Del Rio. <laughs> Again. Ron had the right idea. Before you do anything on this, I don't think you're going to be able to touch any of those trees because of that eagle's nest. And I think that should be your first phone call is to find out what the law is on that. And I don't think you're going to be able to trim them or do a damn thing there mm -hmm. with that eagle's nest there. And if you do take some down, you're going to weaken that whole bank. But I would check into the, before you do anything, because Mr. Eagle rules. I think you're right. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we have a motion on the floor to protect or to um, retain ownership of the treed portion, the front treed portion. Um, it's been seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Defeated. Okay. So, um, we have a motion now for, or have we made the motion? Oh no, we haven't made the motion. Um, so council, would we like to move forward with the changes that we are, at, not changes, but just general comments that we've given to the CAO um, for amendments of the RFP and release it? 
Um, and I do just want to say that I recognize that everyone's intention here um, is not to clear cut the trees. So um, would have preferred that that motion passed, but um, you know I know that we are going into this um, just hoping to get the best developments possible. Um, so Councillor Haggard, would you like to make a motion to, it's not written, but you can just make a motion to receive and then um, move forward. I would like to make a motion that the CEO and city clerk move forward with the uh, suggested amended changes that the council's put forward on the RFP. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Okay. All right. Um, moving, f actually, let, let's call a recess. It's been two hours. Um, so we'll take a 10 minute recess and we'll come back at 4.05. Call our meeting back to order and item nine from the city clerk, we have Harbor Key leases. City clerk, do you wanna just speak to each of these briefly? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, the first one is uh, Spirit Square. Uh, that is for um, the Sunday crafters market uh, with Gwen Lowe and Beth Larson. It's a five month term, um, May for, starting May 1st. Okay. Okay. Um. Councillor Solda, do you want to read the first motion? Sure, I move that the, uh, Madam Mayor, I move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a lease with Spirit Square at the Alberni Harbor Quay to, uh, with Gwen Lowe and Beth Larson for conducting a crafters market for five months term commencing May 1st, 2019 and currently monthly rent at $75 per month plus GST, $393.75 for uh, the term. Is there a seconder? Second. Okay, any questions on this one? Councillor Solda. So Madam Mayor, uh, just a question, just in general on leases, and this would be, be in this one, is that there's a lot of people still only opening a certain amount of time or you know, maybe Tuesday to Friday, not seven days a week. Um, I think it's important that they open more and I think the and the reason is because it affects all the businesses not just theirs <coughs> and so how can we work towards that this would be questions on so I think that's a great question um, not related to spe specifically to this one just because mm -hmm. it is for the crafters market right. um, so they'll have specific hours but um, I think this is a conversation that um, I think it's time to start having um, with uh, our Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage. Um, I think she's the right person to lead that. Um, and maybe it's something that um, we need to ask for a report on on a future council meeting because um, consistent hours, parking, um, just you know, improving the vibrancy of, of the Harbor Key in that area and really getting buy-in to that, um, I think is going to be really important. And of course it was reflected um, in the preliminary work of our strategic plan that will be com coming out as well. Um, so I think that's a great comment, mm -hmm. and um, she's not here today, but I'm sure CAO will pass this along to her, um, mm -hmm. and we know it's already top of mind for her as well. And Madam Mayor, maybe it's something we put in the leases as they come up. Hey, you could, Absolutely. this is what it's going to change, and, and this is what we're going to sure. do. City Clerk? Uh, Madam Mayor, that is a, it's a good point, and it is being included in yes. our new leases. Um, oh, we are good. trying to identify consistent hours, also the fact that... Um, they recognize that they may be required to be open during mm -hmm. special events that we would give prior notice to them um, and also that uh, you know the key may may be closed to vehicle traffic at some times yep. so we are including those clauses into agreements nice. as they mm -hmm. come due so the next one being okay. harvest scoop ice cream you'll see that in there so a question is how many are not included at the moment how many because we're doing it as new lease as leases come um, come up so is there quite a bit not included yet? Yes. Not sure off the top of my head, Madam okay. Mayor, but there's certainly been the last, um, I, I'm going to say four potentially yeah. that we've included that clause in. Okay, thank you. Any further comments on this one? Okay, all in favor? 
carried. And city clerk, the next one. It's just a, a business sale, correct? That's right, Madam Mayor. Harbor Scoop ice cream uh, business is being sold. Uh, so um, we are entering into a new lease with the new owners. And we've included those clauses around consistency of hours. Um, and they will be commencing June 1st and they will be new in our community. Great, thank you. And Councillor Corbeil, would you like to read this one? Yes, Madam Mayor, I move that the report from the CAO dated May 6, 2019 be received in Council for the City of Port Alberni. Oh, sorry, next one. Oh, yeah. geez, <laughs> jumping ahead again. Must be, <laughs> must be near supper. Uh, that I move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a lease for Harbor Scoop Ice Cream at the, Har uh, the Alberni Harbor Key with Kevin Romanuk and Christine Finch for the purpose of operating a tea house and ice cream parlor for a two year term commencing June 1st, 2019 at the current monthly rent of $307.64 per month plus GST uh, in brackets, $323.02 per month. Great, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor, carried. And item 10 from the Chief Administ Administrative Officer, a lease renewal for Industrial Heritage Society. CAO. Madam Mayor, uh, this is a lease renewal we've, we've been working on for some time with uh, Industrial Heritage Society. And um, it's for the Industrial Heritage Center, which is the old ice arena at 9th Avenue, I believe. 9th and Dunbar. And um, I think it's Dunbar. Yeah. Anyway, you know the building. Um, so some highlights of the... Um, and I'll call them highlights because I'm, I'm proud of where we got to on this lease renewal. Um, do we not, are you able to bring that up on the screen? That would be helpful. Um, so we've, we determined uh, a 15 year term lease with a five year renewal option. Um, again, it's a dollar per year lease payment. Uh, the, the previous lease um, for the site was just a lease of the building. There was actually no um, provision or agreement that IHS would actually be responsible for the, the maintenance and repair and operation of our, our heritage fleet. So we've inserted that obligation into the lease agreement. And um, so I think that's a good place for it to be there. Um, they will also, um, IHS will develop and adhere to a facility safety plan, which was uh, um, staff have been working with them for a number of years on that. So that's a good step forward. Um, the city has taken on in this lease responsibility for utility costs. Uh, in the previous lease, you might recall, the, the tenant was responsible for utility costs um, in actual practice, the city has paid utilities throughout that term. And um, IHS was clear to us that they don't have the ability to pay, they don't have revenue to pay utilities. So this lease continues with past practice, but it actually says we're the city's responsible for, um, for those utility costs. It does cap the electricity to a, basically a current usage. So um, if they decided to take on welding, you know, as a, as a daily daily initiative, it, it would go over the cap that the city is exposed to. Um, the agreement also, uh, maybe the item that I'm most pleased with is that it identifies an alternate revenue source um, direction, if you like, and um, how those alternate revenues um, would, be, would be handled. And basically they would, they would become, uh, be inserted into a, an operating reserve fund for the purpose of maintaining the fleet and the building um, going forward for um, operating and capital costs after costs, so um, after the costs that were incurred to generate those revenues, the rest of it would go into a reserve fund. The, um, the discussion around getting to this lease, um, there was a lot of conversation around uh, monitorizing, is the term that IHS used, monitorizing their operations. Um, to date, they, they've been doing good volunteer work and the city's been funding it and they've been getting by on a shoestring, so they don't have enough money. We feel there's too much cost to the city and we've, we've um, agreed that we're gonna try to find other revenue sources. And we think the film industry is a natural one, film or, or lease it, uh, rentals for other things. And um, we're gonna pursue those revenue sources. So Madam Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions on this. Questions, Councillor Poon? Um, yes, I think the IHS does great work in our community, but I was wondering, um, apart from the utilities payments, uh, have they, been fulfilling the obligations of their lease in the past? 
I would say yes. On, on this facility um, and on the work that they do there, we're very pleased with the way they manage this site and their, um, their attention to, to cost control. Even though we were paying the utilities all this time, they went ahead and changed all the lights, for example, to um, low energy use. And um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with the way they're managing this and the way they've approached the, the going forward on the lease. And we're hopeful that this becomes a kind of a basis for um, leases on train and, and roundhouse as well. Councillor Corbeil. Yeah, I just want to make a, a comment that, uh, you know, the Industrial Heritage Society does uh, so much good work and the amount of volunteer hours that those people do is just really, I think, underappreciated by the community. So uh, a, shout out, a shout out to that group and I'm glad to see that they've got some security for 15 years for the, uh, the uh, centre. Councillor Solda. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I also look at... Um, the Heritage Society looks after our collection. It's not their collection, it's our collection. So they needed this building to be housed. The history on it is that the city was going to take it down. They came forward and asked if they could put the collection in there. So I think it's a great thing. Um, I also have a, we pay the insurance on it too, don't we? Because I notice it's not in there. Yeah, we, um, we'll pay insurance on the facility and the fleet and yeah. they've, um, can't recall they, they almost certainly will be insuring as well okay yeah. so would that should that be in the agreement it, it'll, it'll be in the agreement yeah okay it, it'll be there already oh okay I just wanted to check yeah. so I think they do great work in and I know they're trying to get more and more people to go and take a look at the collection as a museum and um, it's taken a long time so there's there's your insurance there yeah okay thank you so so the society is, is insuring and indemnifying the city Okay. Holding us harmless. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a suggestion, CAO, if you're talking to them, is they need to start keeping track of their volunteer hours because when you're um, getting grant proposals for this kind of um, facility and non for profit, you have to report your volunteer hours. So it might be a good idea if they started keeping some kind of a book. I, I know that at times they report out on volunteer hours, but I'm not sure how much um, rigor they put to that. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I can also add, um, we had a fair bit of discussion around um, minor maintenance versus major maintenance, and um, neither in this agreement, neither party is responsible for major maintenance, so that the agreement is silent on that. So if the roof needs replacing or there's a, a, a major issue that um, they are not, they don't have the wherewithal to pay for it anyway and um, they wanted the city to take responsibility and we said we're not prepared to take that on at this time but um, in the end it's our building so um, we'd probably be on the hook for that cost but the, the agreement is silent on that so if and when a major cost comes up we're gonna have to sort that out at that time and we're hopeful that we have a reserve fund in place um, between partnering with with IHS that we can develop some reserve funds for major repairs. Councillor Washington did you have any comments? Thank you, Madam Mayor. No, just uh, again to commend the Industrial Heritage Society and all they do for Port Alberni. Uh, I know their group is, the numbers they have in their group makes a lot of service groups envious that they can retain that kind of membership, but uh, they do it and they seem to have a lot of fun. So uh, again, hats off and thank you for what you do for Port Alberni. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and just wanna thank the CAO for um, working on this lease for quite a while as well um, and trying to get to a point that um, you know is fair for all parties. Um, I do have concern about the um, silence on major repairs um, because, as Councillor Solda said, this building came to Industrial Heritage um, because it was going to be taken down and that was because of the cost to you know, redo a roof or something at the time. Um, we have a long history of giving buildings away because the cost to keep them up is too great and then organizations coming back and asking us to pay for that cost. And although um, I have huge appreciation for what the IHS does in our community and certainly out of that center as well, I think we need to be very cautious to not take on costs that we never intended to take on. Um, I had a problem at first with um, paying for utilities, but given that they are maintaining our assets, um, and I do know that when we went through on a tour um, they were really proud of the work that they had done to be as energy efficient as possible um, all at their own cost so um, I can appreciate that it does make sense for us to pay the utilities but um, I 
I have a hard time having nothing in there about major repairs, understanding that they don't have the financial ability to do it. But um, we don't have the financial ability to maintain all of the buildings at financial or the, to do the major repairs to all of the buildings that we have given away because we don't have the financial ability to do the repairs. So um, very concerned about that because I think it's just um, a liability down the road that somebody's going to come and ask us to pay for. And when roofs like this come, they're two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. So um, I'm not comfortable with the lease um, for that reason. Um, otherwise, I think it, it's, it's a great lease and um, certainly an improvement from what we've had. Hopefully, we'll be able to build up a reserve um, if not, uh, hopefully we'll be able to build up a reserve before a roof or something is needed. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Councillor Poon, would you like to make this motion? Yes, I'll make the motion that the report from the CAO dated May 6, 2019 be received and Council for the City of Port Alberni authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a lease for the Industrial Heritage Society or Heritage Centre at 3250 9th Avenue with the Western Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Society for a 15-year term commencing October 15th, 2018 at the rate of $1 per year. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Madam Mayor. Okay. And any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. And from the Manager of Planning, Development Permit Number 1901 for 4000 Bird Street. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, before you for consideration uh, is the application for development permit 1901, 4000 Bird Street. This property is located within the development permit area number one, multifamily residential, and the purpose uh, of the development permit uh, is to provide guidelines that cover the form and character of the project uh, with the intent of being to ensure a high quality development and appropriate, and appropriate development. The applicant has submitted plans in support of the development permit, which are attached within the report. Uh, the applicant is proposing two four-story multifamily buildings on the subject property. The two rental apartment buildings will be a wood, of wood frame construction. One building will consist of 71 units, and the other will consist of 70 units and one rental office. The two buildings run parallel to Bird Street and will be separated by a U-shaped parking lot with site access off Anderson Avenue. Total of 179 parking stalls and 40 uh, bicycle stalls will be provided. And the property is zoned RM3, higher density residential, and the development permit as proposed meets all uh, zoning requirements. In terms of physical appearance, the building's exterior will consist of several neutral colors and natural materials. Wood posts will be used to differentiate and define primary uh, entrances to each building. The variety of exterior materials or the variety of exterior materials and colors will provide for an attractive and contrasting building detail. Uh, the landscaping features as well uh, and open spaces are both uh, well designed and functional, providing various amenities for the property, which will be attractive for a rental property such as this. Many trees will be planted on the property uh, and spread throughout the site, which should result in a pleasant aesthetic overall. As proposed, the development meets the intent of the development permit guidelines. Uh, and the planning department supports uh, issuing development permit 1901. And I should note as well that the applicant is in the uh, audience here today uh, to answer any questions you might have. Great, thank you very much. Um, why don't we start by reading the motion? Um, Councillor Corbeil, if you wanna read that super long motion, you gotta read it all, I think. <laughs> or can we just say as written? Great, you're gonna move as written. <laughs> Okay, um, well, I will say uh, that the Council for the City of Port Alberni approved development permit number 19-01 and that the City Clerk be authorized to sign the permit including the following Schedule B development plans as written. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Thank you. Um, and now we'll take questions. Council, any questions on this application? Councillor Solda. I think it's great and other people are just excited and can't wait to to get into one of these units. I, I have a question though, is it strata or is it just going to be a rental basis? Do you uh, know? I believe that it's gonna be a rental basis, but perhaps the applicant could clarify. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be a full rental, no, no strat on it. Okay, so affordable rental? Um, I'm, I, I have to ask that question. No, it's a uh, market rent. Market rent, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, other questions? I have a couple. Um, so, yes, for you. <laughs> um, just want to say, first of all, um, that there's a huge need in our community for this. So I'm really thrilled to see it coming forward. Um, I've had a few questions um, online, just people looking at the application, wondering about the timeline. So will you start building right away? Um, what's your estimated kind of time to complete? Uh, right now we're slated probably for like an early spring start of okay. next year. Okay. Uh, with building completion probably around October, okay. November. So okay. a full build out would be a probably about 10 months. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and a lot of people have asked about hiring local contractors. I would imagine that's probably not something you know right now. But um, I know somewhere, I know we're a setting contractor that we normally use is local. Okay. Um, but other than that, we try to go local as much as we can, sure. depending on the trade pool. Uh, we normally hire local laborers and trades that we can. Uh, but I, I can't guarantee it, For but sure. uh, we try as hard as we can. That's Obviously, it cuts down on some costs with LOA or Absolutely. other town trade, so. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I just wanna say that there is such a need, um, so it's exciting to see this kind of building being built in the community. And even if it is market rentals rather than affordable rentals, um, it takes huge pressure off of our rental market, which has gotten kind of out of control. So um, adding 140 units is fantastic for our community. So awesome. thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no further questions or comments, uh, all in favor? Carried. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> um, and item 12 from the Manager of Planning, Development Permit Number 1902 for 4721 Johnston Road. Okay, thank you again. Uh, so before you now for consideration is the application for Development Permit Number 1902, 4721 Johnston Road. Uh, the subject property is located within development permit area number two, commercial, uh, and the guidelines for this cover the form and character uh, with the intent being to ensure a high quality uh, and appropriate development in a highly visible area of the city. So the applicant has submitted plans in support of the development permit, which again are attached to the report. Uh, the applicant has proposed one single story commercial retail building on the subject property. The building will be wood frame construction and will consist of three commercial retail units in total. The proposed development will have a site coverage of 33% or 535 meters squared approximately. And I just want to highlight that because uh, I noted that there was a typo in my report. So I just want to be, be clear about that. Um, so the, the calculation is correct. Um, the development will be built uh, to the Johnston Road property line and the commercial retail units will front onto Johnston Road and Adelaide Street. The placement of the building is strategic. Uh, the street-oriented development will contribute to the overall walkability of the area and the vibrancy of the commercial street, which meets the recommendations of the city's Waterfront North study. A parking lot will be located to the rear of the building with 17 parking stalls, including one accessible stall, and uh, four bicycle stalls will also be provided on site. A parking lot will be accessed uh, by vehicle traffic from Adelaide Street a drive through lane will be included as part of the development along the west side of the property, and a drive -through will, the drive through will exit onto Johnston Road. The property is zoned C7 core business, and as proposed, the development meets all requirements of the zoning bylaw. In terms of the building's appearance, uh, the exterior of the building will consist of gray and silver aluminum, as you can see in the photo there, uh, and stainless steel. Again, wood timber posts will be used uh, as architectural features, helping to differentiate different aspects of the building, uh, which is quite uh, attractive and, and uh, a good design element. The two-tiered angular roof contributes to the contemporary appearance of the building and the design as well. The building design materials and colors provide for attractive building and a distinct West Coast modern style, uh, which I think is, is suitable for the area. The landscaping plan is fairly simple but straightforward and includes a mix of drought tolerant and native plants, including trees, shrubs, and uh, perennials. <laughs> Overall, the project is attractive and a, an attractive and modern development uh, that will contribute to the vibrancy of the area. And as proposed, the development permit meets the intent of the development permit guidelines. As such, the planning department is uh, in support of issuing the development permit for number 1902. Thank you very much. Council, questions? Councillor Poon. 
yes, I, I like the styling of the building. Um, I have a concern about the drive-through exit. Will there be any uh, safety systems in place to warn pedestrians of vehicles that are exiting the drive-through? Like maybe a flashing light or... or um Nothing that has been included in the application to mm. date. Okay. Councillor Silva. Madam Mayor, is this the um, property that's the old gas station area? Uh -huh. Is there enough space actually to have that many cars? Because you got a paint building right by, it was a paint place before. There is enough space. I, based on the application that's proposed with the site plans, it appears that there's enough space mm -hmm. for the, the development. It, it's beautiful, it looks great. I just, yeah. About time something gets developed in that Absolutely. area. Absolutely, very exciting. Other questions? Seeing none. Okay. Um, Councillor Washington, would you like to read the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni approve development permit number 19 01 and the City Clerk be authorized to sign the permit, including the following Schedule B development plans as listed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Madam Mayor. Okay, great. And I just want to say that I'm really excited to see this um, development application. This has been a one of those vacant lots that's been vacant in our community for a long time. Um, and I think adding a beautiful new building to this area is going to make a huge improvement in our community. Councilor Washington. I know the public will be dying to ask, is there any hints what's moving in there? Just social media rumors <laughs> that it's A&W, but oh, yeah. who knows? <laughs> I wouldn't put much weight on that. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Um, no, nothing according to the application. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, on the motion, all in favor? Carried. On to bylaws uh, from the Manager of Planning, Advisory Planning Commission minutes. Are there any questions on the minutes? Seeing none, Councillor Haggard, would you like to move receipt of the report? I move that the summary report of the April 18th, 2019 meeting of the Advisory Planning Commission be received. Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor? Carried. And on to the applications now. Development application zoning bylaw amendment 5119 Athol Street. Manager of Planning. Hello. <laughs> so uh, we've received an application for text amendments to the zoning bylaw. Uh, the applicant would like to amend the text of the zoning bylaw to permit cannabis microcultivation and cannabis microprocessing as site-specific uses in the C3 service commercial zone at 5119 Athol Street. So the subject property is located within the Southport area, and the surrounding area contains a mix of commercial, industrial, single-family, and multifamily uses. The neighborhood is arguably currently undergoing revitalization and development. Several nearby properties are of strategic inter interest to the city as well. The nature of uh, cannabis microcultivation and microprocessing are not necessarily incompatible with some of the existing uses nearby, mm -hmm. and cannabis retail is already a permitted uh, use in the C3 uh, zone. However, since the area is undergoing this change, it might be worthwhile um, to give some further thought and consider consideration to determine what the desired future of the area is and what the best approach would be to achieve that vision. Uh, furthermore, to date, the city has only determined which zones uh, can be used to accommodate cannabis retail stores, as that was the, uh, the first priority in, uh, in response to the rollout of the federal legislation. Uh, and so we have not yet determined how, uh, how we want to allow for cannabis production in the city uh, as, a per as a permitted use. So as such, the Advisory pl uh, Planning Commission has recommended that staff work with the ACRD First Nations and the community to determine the appropriate zones to accommodate cannabis production before proceeding with a decision about the application. Thank you. Um, questions from Council first. Uh, so my first question is why um, with the ACRD? Um, and not that I don't think we should work with the ACRD on it, um, but we're two like very different um, bodies and um, yeah, just was curious about that. Yeah, so um, in, in having discussions with their planning department, the process that they're currently going through to determine 
um, where to permit cannabis cultivation, it might be strategic to have um, discussions in terms of how how we want to approach that. Um, obviously, we're situated within the regional district. Uh, there's properties mm -hmm. just outside the city bounds that might be more appropriate for certain types of um, cannabis cultivation compared to what's permitted within um, sure. the city. So there's there's just different approaches, and it would be worthwhile to have discussions with them to see how they're approaching it. Not to say sure. that they should determine what we're doing. Sure. Um, I think my concern around that is just that um, the ACRD board certainly does seem to have um, a different um, view on cannabis as an industry than our council has taken. Um, I think we've been a little bit more proactive in um, seeing the value of it as an industry. And so um, although I think there's definitely value in, in consistency uh, in the region, um, as an example, the ACRD board is talking about not allowing any cannabis retail applications um, or o only allowing them at one intake per year rather than just um, what, as they come which I think from our perspective as a city would give us a huge opportunity. And so as much as we are all one region, we are also competing for tax base um, and wanna be somewhat mindful of, of that. So working together makes sense in some ways and in other ways, uh, not so much. <laughs> um, so I'll just open this up to questions again. Um, Councillor Poon, did you have your hand up first? Okay, Councillor Cordial. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I attended this uh, Planning Commission meeting, and um, what struck me, I, I thought we did uh, a real good job with the uh, cannabis retail uh, question doing the uh, Council of the Whole meetings, and I, I wonder if we shouldn't be doing the same thing with the cultivation. There's, we seem to have uh, people chasing uh, first the, the uh, agricultural land and then I don't know where that went uh, from Mount Beaver Creek and uh, hopefully we'll have some industrial lands available. And this particular site, uh, there's body shops, there's uh, tire shops. Uh, it doesn't seem totally in, in, uh, it's in keeping with the, the nature of that block for the most part. Um, and you know, the, who knows what the future will have when the, uh, the old uh, arrow view is gone. But um, anyways, I, I just think the community the whole might be the best way to address this issue. Thank you. Councillor Solta. I like the idea of going to the community of the whole. Um, Beaver Creek, just so, just a touch, it, it's gone back, referred back to the ALR Commission, so that's where that one stands. Um, I w I'm also kind of curious what other communities do when it comes to cultivating and, and do they allow it in the city? Um, is there a, I don't know if there's a smell. How does it work? You know, I'd like to know more information. I don't know, you know, so I'd like to know more about that. Well, maybe wait to speak to sw yeah. smell because I, we, I know we do have someone here who's dying to make a comment, but um, if, uh, if our manager of planning could make any comment on um, other communities and what the approach has been, I think that would be great. Yeah, and that's kind of what we were recognizing um, with this with this applicant is that um, you know the applicant is kind of uh, ahead of where our department is in terms of getting to the issue, and so uh, we haven't had the opportunity yet to dig deep into what other municipalities are doing or best practices. We've had very preliminary discussions with the ACRD uh, and, and looking at some some um, issues in, in the Lower Mainland and, and Nanaimo and surrounding areas on the island, but um, really we we feel that we need to take the time to look into that so that we can bring that information forward to you uh, to assess and make the decision. And, and one more thing, sure. Madam Mayor, and plus the government regulations, is there regulations on the growing and how is how does that work? So I would I'm imagine sure the applicant would be following, would have to follow all of the recommendations yeah. as part of a normal process. Um, Councillor Hager, did you have a question? Okay. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, is this going to be similar to the facility that's on Butte Street, the government-run facility on Butte Street? I, I don't believe so. Okay. But I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe we could clarify with the applicant. Yeah. No? Okay. No, it's just that the uh, Councillor Colbert was talking about the area, and I mean, that one does have some odor at some time. I think they just packaged there, but it's sort of nestled between an auto parts store uh, mm -hmm. um, and other assorted businesses. That's just a comment. So um, maybe we'll give the applicant um, an opportunity to make some brief comments. Um, and I just want to say first that 
Um, although I understand, um, you know, the want to go through a process, I also think that um, with cannabis, we still need to work really hard to take our personal uh, feelings out of it and look at it as a business. Um, so I'm curious to hear on smell, but I actually do think that this area is the right area for it. Um, and I mean, if we're looking at areas of our community, this is not a, like this is a light industrial kind of area, um, largely, and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, where, to, where to even start on that? Um, to my knowledge, I am the first person in Port Alberni to apply under the federal regulation to have a government operated facility. Although I am aware that one was currently rezoned in the past, it is a new set of cannabis regulations under the Cannabis Act and your text definitions, which I'm trying to change, uh, don't currently meet at that facility. Um, my facility is uh, very much regulated. It's been operating with a medical permit that I've been chosen, I've personally chosen to not operate since October, since I was given the chance to cross that line and come into a tax paying light. There are f five off the top of my head, uh, similar size, fully legal facilities within a one block radius of my own. Those facilities, um, Councillor Solda, are not regulated yet very much legal. Um, they, uh, a lot of these facilities that people um, have smell from, um, we don't have authorization to go and inspect what actually happens at these facilities, but I guarantee you uh, that a licensed federal facility has an extensive exhaust system that must be inspected prior to issuing a federal permit and is also subject to several multi-year inspections as they go through uh, quality control and product testing. So it certainly wouldn't be of anyone's benefit to install an expensive exhaust system and then remove it for any reason. In fact, there's actually a very extensive uh, complaint process where if there was complaints about it, people could call, similar to the bylaw, it's a complaint driven process. They could make complaints about my facility, at which point I would have inspectors come and, and thoroughly inspect it. And I have anticipated that to happen, being as I'm in such proximity to other large legal medical shows that exist in the unregulated realm. Um, there is already subject like to smells in that area. So I expect some finger pointing, which is why I opened my facility up to, to walkthroughs like with the Uptown Merchants and stuff. So there was a lot of people in the community that weren't aware there. They come in and, oh, it's empty. Well, where is that smell coming from? From a very much legal facility, just in the unregulated market. And the market is changing very quickly. Um, when I originally came uh, when you guys were going through the Committee of the Whole and everything, I was up here jumping up and down trying to get on cultivation and you requested that I make a formal request for a meeting of the Whole, which I yep. did eight months ago mm -hmm. and I was um, denied um, that, um, which, so if we can do it again, I'm super in favor of doing so. The only thing that's currently even holding up my federal application at this time is a four inches of land which I'm actively trying to buy and have been told we can't discuss until the arrow view comes down. I have no idea why the one would affect me so much. Um, and I would really like to get to the bottom of that because it's seriously a frustrating thing that I lose sleep and hair over. It's uh, four inches of land. But in regards to the actual application, when I came to council with the initial intent to apply, Health Canada uh, across Canada had received less than 34 applications for microcultivation. To date, we are in the several hundred that have been received by Health Canada, and they have actually issued 87 um, licenses to start the production of the facility, not to cultivate cannabis, but to build their facility. Last week, Health Canada changed the regulations, stating that your facility must be built like the one out Beaver Creek that some of you guys are familiar with. It's an empty lot and they're just pipe dreams about building something. Now the government says this, the building has to be built before you guys can submit your application. I've now jumped ahead again in front of 70% of the people. So really it's just me waiting for staff to, to decide on the appropriate uh, 
places to put them. And now I don't expect, um, like I couldn't touch anything Ron knows about logging. I, I couldn't even touch it. I don't expect everyone to be completely educated on all the federal policies, like when it comes to trying to designate land use. The ACRD did an absolutely horrible job of that, which no offense to the people there, but they've openly admitted that they, they weren't aware of the differences of the micro cultivation and the standard nurseries versus micro nurseries, which are only allowed to be 20 feet by 25 feet when they set their, <coughs> their placements up saying you need a minimum of six acres to have a 20 by 25 foot shed. What's well, a lot harder to take it back mm -hmm. once you've made the rules and we tried very much to educate everyone on that, but they just tended to drift in a different direction towards the larger facilities. I don't believe that I could reproduce the quality of products that I would be able to deliver in a larger setting. I don't think that anything small, like a farmer's market carrot, doesn't scale up very well. It really doesn't, and the government has set specific limitations um, to a 2,100 square foot canopy size. The facility in question has, currently has 2,300 square feet of usable production floor space. But when you incorporate the WCB walkways and the, the appropriate uh, restrictions that I need to put in place for federal and WCB, I'm only working with about 1,500 square feet. So I'm not trying to even maximize what I'm doing there. I'm just trying to start a business and run it efficiently and, and properly mm -hmm. until I can possibly even add another floor to the building. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off there. Okay, Cause you know, I'll keep going. I know you will. Okay. Thank you. Um, but I appreciate your comments. Um, I think it's helpful to this discussion. Um, and I do want to recognize that you did come to our committee of the whole and say, what about micro cultivation? And we said, not now we're not ready. Yeah. Um, and you know, now we need to get to that point where we are ready. Um, so, um, I think that if we are able to move forward in a committee of the whole um, way, or if, if staff is, is able to bring, do some consulting and bring us back a set of, of guidelines to consider, um, I'm happy with that as long as we are able to do it in a reasonably quick turnaround because I don't want um, applications like yours or other ones that may come our way to be discouraged from our community because we haven't set our regulations yet. So I think if we are going to um, you know, go down this route, we need to make sure that we do it as a priority. I appreciate that. I would also like to note that on the uh, papers that you guys received, and there was some confusion at the APC meeting, I have uh, reached out to the Tisha, the Uchukwesit, and the Huayat Band with expressions of what my intentions to do in the city was, and I haven't received any feedback back other than I was in negotiations for a partnership with the Uchukwesit Band last year, at which point they told me, we will build our own facility far faster than you can have yours rezoned. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Colson may have been right, um, <laughs> because they're up to something. But I, I have done everything I can to reach out to the First Nations sure. communities and engage them in it. And when it comes to the actual land use, the federal regulations regarding the actual building as a standalone building in the designated areas that you guys set aside, I don't think you'll have more than, I would be surprised if you could find 10 buildings in town mm -hmm. that would, without the zoning changes, that would even qualify to the federal standards, so sure. you certainly won't be overwhelmed with, with by my experience, with yeah. any large volume of applications. Sure. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Poon, would you like to read the motion? I'll move that the Council for the City of Port Alberni direct staff to investigate and determine specific zones for cannabis production, cultivation and processing before proceeding with considerations of the application for 5119 Athol Street and that community and First Nations engagement be made a priority. Is there a seconder? Okay, and are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. And the next item, development application, proposed zoning bylaw amendment 5189 Compton Road. And this one's more straightforward, but I'll let you highlight it. <laughs> uh, yep, so we've received an application uh, for a map amendment to the zoning bylaw. The applicant would like to rezone a portion of 5189 Compton Road from RR1 rural residential to R3 small lot uh, single family residential. 
the applicant proposes to subdivide the subject property to create four new small residential lots fronting Compton Road and one larger lot uh, for the existing house and outbuildings. The proposed small lot subdivision meets the strategic goal of a livable and sustainable community and the OCP uh, is supportive of, encour of encouraging infill development. The proposed zoning and subdivision are compatible with the character of the neighborhood and the planning department supports the zoning map amendment. The advisory planning commission uh, has also recommended support of the application as well. Excellent. Councillor Solda, would you like to make the motion? I'll move that the council for the city of Port Alberni proceed with the map amendment to zoning bylaw schedule A, zoning map, to change the designation on a portion of lot one, district lot 20, Alberni district plan 9584, except part in plan 10613 PID 005356407 located at 5189 Compton Road from RR1 Rural Residential to R3 Small Lot Single Family Residential. Can we read the second part with it? Oh, sorry. Okay. I think I think you can. And that as part of the development process, the applicant be required to receive preliminary layout approval letter from the proposed subdivision from the City of Port Alberni's approving officer before final adoption of the bylaw. Second that amendment. Okay, and are there any questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Okay, and Councillor Solda, if you want to continue. I'll move that the zoning bylaw. Map Amendment Number 345189, Compton Road, Potter, Bylaw Number 4989, be introduced and read a first time. Seconder. Second that amendment. All in favor? Carried. And Madam Mayor, I move the Zoning Bylaw Map Amendment Number 345189, Compton Road, Potter, Bylaw Number 4989, be read a second time. Second that amendment. All in favor? Carried. And finally, I move that the zoning bylaw map amendment number 34, 5189, Compton Road, Potter, bylaw number 4989, be advanced to a public hearing on June 24, 2019, at 6 30 p.m. in City Hall Council Chambers. Second. And seeing no questions, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. And on to correspondence for action, we have an email dated May 3rd, 2019, requ requesting a temporary road closure on 3rd Avenue between Argyle Street and Angus Street on Wednesdays from June 19th through August 28th from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to operate a street market called the Arrowview, sorry, Arrowsmith, not Arrowview. <laughs> you got that in your mind, Arrowsmith dude. View Brilliant Market. <laughs> We're not going to call it the Arrowview. Um, any questions or comments on this one? Councillor Solda? Madam Mayor, all the potential businesses that will be affected or anybody around there will be notified prior to, right? Yeah, I think most I think, I, I think most I just are want involved to make sure. in the planning of this okay, for good. sure. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Would you like to make the motion? Sure, I'll move that the email dated May 3rd, 2019, requesting a temporary road closure on 3rd Avenue between Argyle Street and Angus Street on Wednesdays from June 19th through August 28th from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to operate a street market be received and council concur with the request subject to notification of emergency services, consultation with all affected businesses to minimize potential conflict and traffic concerns and provisions of standard liability insurance. Is there a seconder? Are there any questions or comments? All in favor? Carried. Item J, informational correspondence, City Clerk. Uh, just a few items, Madam Mayor. Uh, RCMP Municipal Policing Agreement uh, expenditures to March 31st, 2019. Minutes from the Alberni Valley Museum and Heritage Commission meeting held April 3rd. A letter from BC Child and Youth in Care Week um, advising that June the 3rd to the 9th is British Columbia's Child and Youth in Care Week. Um, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing have submitted a copy of a letter announcing the 30-point housing plan, an investment of $7 billion over 10 years through the B Building BC funds, and minutes from the February 7th Food Security and Climate Disruption Committee. Okay. Councillor Haggard, would you like to move receipt? I move that informational correspondence items numbered 1 through 5 be received and filed. 
Is there a seconder? Second, Madam Mayor. And are there any items councilors would like to speak to? Councilor Corbeil. If I could just ask one question, I've probably asked this question three or four times and I've yet to figure out the, the answer. On the uh, RCMP uh, policing agreement, the difference between what we budgeted and what we paid is uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $951,000. Now, does that entire $951,000 go towards uh, if there's ever a horrible event where we have to bring in inspectors from outside the city or does a portion of that go into a fund? Madam Mayor, um, so did that $951,000 figure come from that report? Yes, yeah. so that's the, um, I think that's the projection for the end of the year. Okay. So it's not always where we're at, because I think this is just yeah, partway so the, through the, the year. year. The year end dates for the RCMP are different than for the city and they often annualize. Yeah. Um, so we, we um, I'd caution council against um, predicting what the under expenditure will be. In, in most, if not all years, recent years, there has been an under expenditure and that fund, that money goes into the reserve fund, mm -hmm. which council has determined that the cap of that fund will be $2 million. Uh, we're not at that cap yet. Um, I'd be surprised if our under expenditure was 951,000 by the end mm -hmm. of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. For sure. well, unless I'm mistaken, it says this statement lists all the direct expenditures occurred to provide police services to your municipality from April 1st, 2018 to March 31st, 2019. So it sounds like those are actual, actual numbers. Madam Mayor, I can, I can ask uh, the Director of Finance for a report on this if you like. Uh, we've, we haven't had a $900,000 under expenditure yeah. in any year that I'm familiar with. It's generally three to 400,000. Yeah. Maybe it's 900 this year, wouldn't I'll, that be nice? I'll, re I'll remind council that we under budget by the, the amount of two officers, which I think is about $360,000 in today's dollars. So even if there was an under expenditure of 900, that's, um, we under budget by 350, 360 mm -hmm. because we expect an under expenditure. Yep. For sure. I'll, I'll bring a report on this. That'd be great. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of receiving the correspondence. Thank you. Carried. No report from in camera, and we have our council reports. Councillor Washington, would you like to move receipt and speak to anything you like? <laughs> no, uh, the, the council reports outlining recent meetings and events related to city business be received. Is there a seconder? And anything anyone would like to highlight in their reports or ask about, Councillor Hunter? <laughs> I just want to highlight the day that I spent with the children at the Heritage Fair. It was the most fun I've had being on council. It was a ball. In fact, I emailed Shelley Harding from the museum and said, please invite me back next year. Those kids were exceptionally bright and their projects were wonderful. I just loved it. Thank yeah. you. And I'll echo that. It was really quite amazing. I went the next day for judging, um, and, or for handing, sorry, not judging, handing out awards. Um, and it was really incredible to see what some of the kids had come up with and asking them questions about their projects, how knowledgeable they were. It was clear their parents did not do their projects for them. <laughs> um, so it was really good. Um, and the museum staff and the Heritage Commission did a fantastic job um, in organizing. So um, definitely job well done. Any other comments or things people would like to highlight? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of receiving. Carried. On to new business, Councillor Solda. Yes, I have two notice of motions. Uh, notice of motion um, regarding the empty lots and the burnt out buildings that have been standing for a few years and we'll put a motion together with. <laughs> we'll put a motion together, that's yes. not the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, notice of motion. Anyways, and the second notice of motion is inviting the new owners of Tofino Bus Wilsons to come to council, and so we'll put that together. Okay, Thank that's you. great. Um, and under new business as well, um, I have a question um, for the CAO. We recently went through a fence um, variance process and authorized a variance for a fence to be built at four feet uh, with a two foot variance and the fence was built outside of those regulations so um, I have a lot of concern around that given that we went through a formal process made a decision and then that I, I'm hoping that there was a misunderstanding but I'm wondering what 
process we're taking to um, bring that into compliance. Sure, Madam Mayor, there's, a, there's an active bylaw enforcement file on that, so I can't talk about the specifics of that. Um, but I can tell you that the um, property owner is meeting with staff tomorrow to discuss the, the variance process and um, some misunderstanding, uh, potentially misunderstanding around the process. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else for new business? Okay. Question period. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> First Avenue. Uh, I'm going to kill two birds here with one stone because Tim hasn't phoned me back. Um, that's okay. I understand you guys are busy. I have a concern that's going on with the landfill. Okay. Uh, I was over at the regional office this morning talking to them. They're shooting themselves in the foot. The prices out there are getting so ridiculously high that our gullies and our back roads are going to start filling up with mattresses. You know, like I can understand the drywall but now they're the, the branches, they're gonna start charging. If I'm, I'm commercial, so if I take cardboard out there, I have to pay for it. But if I take it out in my own truck, I don't have to. And I just as something that that's, I wanted to talk to Tim about that because I know you guys don't get along that great, the regional sure board. Sure No, you don't, I know, <laughs> I know how it goes, you know, cause it's a PN contest. But anyways, um, I'm, I just shoot from the hip. It's just that what I'm afraid of is I won't do it because I do it commercially and I get paid to do it, so I do everything right. Mm -hmm. But other people don't. They're just going to turn around and we're going to end up like it was up at Moon Lake there for a while. If you walk up through Rogers Park uh, walkway there and you look at the old banks where they were throwing their fridges and vehicle vehicles, we're going to end up with a real mess. So, uh, Jim, just to that, because um, myself and Councillor Solda do sit on the Regional District Board, yep. um, and through the conversations around um, organic spans and, you know, and price changes and all of those things. Um, one priority has been to to bring ourselves in line with the rest of the island so that we're not this cheap place to dump, yep. but to still be cognizant that we don't want it to be so high that it is prohibitive and people or yep. illegally dump instead. Um, there has been a lot of conversation on the regional district board, and I would say r widely supported by the board for either a free dump day once or twice a year, okay. um, or a pickup, free pickup day where they would contract the city and we would work on picking up bigger items. So um, it's definitely on our minds and okay. we are aware that when you raise prices, you increase the amount of legal dumping that's out there. So that conversation is started, um, nothing official to speak to at this point, but it's definitely on our radar and okay, a lot good. of directors have expressed concern about dumping. Well, I do too, because yeah. I'm out there 40, sure. I'm out there 40 times a week, so I see what goes on. That's right. Also, um, while I'm on that thing, I think they used to do this in town. I haven't been here long enough, but in Mission, where I come from, they have a week where people put stuff out on their, mm -hmm. their, uh, their uh, boulevard, and you can drive around. If you need a window, it's there. If you need mm -hmm. wood, it's there. And then at the end of the week, this that. That. at the end of the week, whatever's yeah. left, the city picks up for nothing and just, yeah. which I think is because like, I see what's thrown out there, yeah. and it's no wonder that it's a, it's a problem of what we're wasting. Mm -hmm. You know what one guy's throwing out the other guy's having to go to the beaver creek or whatever and buy yeah so i just thought it was something that maybe next year or whatever because yeah. i know you guys got lots in your mind yeah that's a great angle to add to it and uh councillor sold and i will definitely bring that forward because i mean i would even help with that because i think it's great because i'm yeah. a hoarder yeah i would <laughs> <laughs> in fact when i saw it in mission i thought well i'm gonna stop and jamie said you can't do that dad and I says, well, sure, look I at that good stuff. But I see, I didn't know that's what it was there for. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Otherwise, I would have come home with a truck full. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Councilor you. Haggard, I think, had a question I was just going to say when my daughter was a starving student, they were able to do that once a year, and that's how she furnished her apartment. Exactly. <laughs> she would drive absolutely. around and grab stuff. Yeah, because one great. man's yep. junk is another man's treasure. <laughs> yep. It's a great well, idea. When you're a starving student, it's free. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Solda, do you have a oh, comment I, also? I do. You got a conversation started I, here. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, with the regional district, there's going to be a lot of changes happening yeah. with the landfill. Um, we have no choice, and so I things things are going to be happening. And Port Alberni, the city will probably be the um, pilot child. We're <coughs> going to probably be the first ones to do organic waste and then expand out with the Probably. regional district Probably. and and they're talking about us doing that also regarding that leaving the stuff outside i have done that and put free and the next day i come home and it's all gone <laughs> it's been great yeah it is but yes. then it ends up um i just had to clean out the park up here uh, or 
uh, Dry Creek Park, is it? It's not the park there? Oh. That, yeah, I just had to go in there and pull some stuff out of there that's been hauled back there because of that kind of stuff. Oh, that's too bad. You so. know, that's, that's what happens. But like sure. if you have it legally and then everybody drives around. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, and I don't, there's lots of changes because I worked with the girls when it first started drywall because none of us had a clue what we were doing. I had to go to all the contractors and tell them what was going on. Keep it separate, you know. I got to sign off on it. I'm the last one with it. And I'm not signing off it unless you have your paperwork and these to, I For won't sure. say what they said, but <laughs> but I know it, I know there are changes coming. We're catching up with the rest of the world. For sure. So Councillor Washington is reminding me that we are at three hours, so we have to have a motion to extend past. So is anyone else wanting to speak today? Okay, well, could we get a motion to extend past 5 p.m.? I'd like more? to make a motion that we extend our meeting past the three-hour limit. <laughs> I had one more point. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. The doctor that you're getting to do these studies is not qualified okay <laughs> don't because i think you guys went through this once before with having somebody that wasn't really qualified doing some tests or something so you're better yes. off to wait and for sure done proper. thank you thank you okay come on forward i'm gonna make this short because i'm tired too <laughs> <laughs> okay we appreciate uh, it uh, questions period okay the septic system, have you had the inspection done by the people and what was the result? Oh, to council. Thank Sorry. you. Um, CEO, do My we name is John Adams. I live at 5205 Batty Road. <laughs> do we have a, um, an update to share on that yet? Madam Mayor, Council, um, we retained a commercial um, septic inspector. He's done his field work, um, working with our staff. I met on, staff, on site with him last week. Uh, he's working on a report. I'm hoping that he can actually make a presentation to council at some great. point in the future, possibly late June, I think. Okay, yeah. great. So it's coming um, and it's a priority for us. Okay, has there been any uh, recommendations or signs that there has to be repairs at this point? We won't know that until we have okay. the report in front of us. The, the campground, are you, uh, I noticed it wasn't in use. Uh, is there a reason for that or? the campground that was put in last year out at McLean's Mill. Uh, I think that'd be something we have to get a proper answer on and report back. Oh. Yeah, because I'm, uh, we, I don't think we have that information here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That was brief. <laughs> have, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public like to ask a question? Come on forward. Hi, Aaron Brevik, 2840 Highmore Road, Fort Alberni, BC. Um, actually, just a, a little statement. I noticed you guys ran into a little problem. I'm going to go down Argyle. I'm not sure exactly what property you guys were referring to. And I, I spoke to Mr. Deacon. There's some issues revolving around uh, sending city workers to clean up a, a lot and stuff that's owned by an individual. Uh, I'm not sure about all the red tape around it. But as a community, the deadline for the cruise ships is looming very quickly. So I've gone and posted on the Port Alberni Army of Problem Solvers. I know I'm on YouTube, so if all you guys can contact me, I need your help. And there's already been a, a pretty good uh, response from really outstanding guys like Michael Moore and stuff to help me uh, grab some lawnmowers, run around, just smash it out real quick because you guys can't stop me from helping. So, <laughs> We're going to not comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, would somebody like to move adjournment? So moved. All in favor? Carried. <laughs>